today on Music City Trucks. It's a big day because we get to introduce our newest project, this 1974 Ford Bronco. We'll test it out, tear it down. Look at that. And blast it. Then we make a plan for our most intense build yet. Hey everybody, welcome to Music City Trucks. It's a big day for us because we get to introduce our newest build. This is probably our favorite project of the season, not only because it's a first gen Bronco and they're super hot, but Mark and I are huge Bronco fans. Yep, I've got my 73 and my 74 here. I have my 82 Bullnose, it's pretty much a woods toy. Yeah, it got you here though. Yeah. So needless to say, we are super excited to tackle this project. Now this 74 Bronco has put nearly 50 years worth of work in, and Mark and I decided it's time for it to retire into a life of relaxation. So we came out to his property to put in its last day of work and have some fun. But before we do that, we thought it'd be cool to show you guys a little history about the Ford Bronco and why they're so cool. Oh, it's definitely cool. Starting in the early 60s, Ford Motor Company saw an opportunity to dive into the four-wheeling market. Using Jeep and other utility vehicle owners as their study group, they created a sport utility vehicle that did everything the other guys were doing, but better including the ability to cruise at highway speeds, climb steeper grades, and with better ride quality and comfort. Thus, the Bronco was born in 1966. It evolved over the years, becoming full size and on an F-150 based chassis in 1978. Then after 30 years of production, it was canceled in 1996. When the resurrection of the brand was announced by Ford in 2020, it became an instant favorite with design and function mirroring its earliest ancestor and creating a whirlwind of interest in the original like it hasn't seen since the 60s. Well, Brandon, what do you think of this thing? This is only the second time I've ever been in a first gen. The first time was our intro. Wow. Yeah. And this is a lot different too, no top. This one's definitely different. No top, no doors, um, a little bit rougher. Yeah, but I, and it, it's character. Oh yeah. Let's just hammer it out. What do you want to do to this thing? Well, I think we have to make it nice. I mean, if this is what we're calling our build that we really wanted to do this season, yeah. we got to put it up a notch. And I'm not saying compare it to other people. I'm yeah, saying just- some nice Broncos Oh, there. they're nice Broncos. I'm just saying put it at a level that we're really proud of that we yeah. could call our dream Bronco. Goes without saying, I'm an early Bronco guy. I mean, I've owned them for over 20 years, and this this is my opportunity to build the Bronco that I've always wanted to build, but I don't want to just build my dream Bronco. I want to build the dream Bronco. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there building really high-end Broncos, and I don't think we need to use what they're doing as the bar. We just need to build the nice Bronco that we think sets the bar for us. This is a perfect platform. It's an empty tub, pretty much. Speaking of empty tub, you know, these things came from the factory three ways. You could get a Roadster, you could get the pickup or the half cab, or you could get the wagon or yep. the full top. What do you like? I'll be honest, I'm more traditional in the Bronco sense of the full top, the SUV. Yep. Um, I would do that, but I like having no top. So I would say half Roadster with the full top. I know this isn't a roadster body. It right. just has no doors. Right, or top. But this is cool. Do you have a list of must, must haves? A must have list. Something overhead cam. Wow, you're throwing that out there first. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like if, if you're gonna have something to drive or to be a daily, or could be a daily, it's gotta have a modern power, power plant. Overdrive transmission. Overdrive, nice transfer case. Uh, I mean, what are, what are yours? I, personally, I, I'd love to see, I mean, this is just kind of, just me being selfish. I wanna do what I would do if I was to build my Bronco over again, 
or if I was to rebuild my Bronco starting today, yeah. I would buy a chassis. Okay. And I would build the chassis up, ground up, full running drivetrain before I would do anything. You know, I like this, like, two birds with one stone thing, and I appreciate your help. Oh, yeah. Well, where I come from, work is fun, so I'm gonna put Brandon to work while we're here. Got a tree I need to cut up, or at least get some logs out of it. Got some fresh gas here for my two-stroke, and I always add a little bit of seafoam motor treatment. This stabilizes the fuel, it keeps the fuel system clean, including the carburetor passageways, and it prevents the combustion chamber from any deposit buildups. For every gallon of two-stroke premix, I add two ounces of seafoam motor treatment. Well, that's just for regular fuel system maintenance. If you have a problem with yours or you're trying to store it over the winter, you could add it directly to the tank. But since I've got mine all dialed in, this is all I need to do. Full, ready to go. I'll grab what you cut. So. All right, sounds good to me. Oh yeah, that'll burn. That's a good one. I, I just want to get this thing back to the studio. Well, Tear into it. Let's build a bucket list Bronco then. Let's do it. Coming up. This isn't the kind of thing you just start throwing parts on. This is gonna be a full build from the ground up. We're back here at the shop with our Bronco project. And let me tell you, this is one of the greatest days of my life. Not only do I get to drive a first gen Bronco, but we're gonna be able to build one. And Mark and I talked about what our dream build would be. And all of those ideas have a starting point, And that one's this beautiful piece of machinery right here. I don't know if beautiful is the word I would use to describe this thing, but it is cool the way it is. It's more like someone's failed project. This isn't the kind of thing you just start throwing parts on. This is gonna be a full build from the ground up. So we really need to know what we're working with here. There's a lot of things that we can't see. We'll get to that later, but now let's take a look at the things we can see first. At first glance, you notice a lot of the hot ginger metallic still visible on this truck, which is cool. I love that color and actually a big Gilligan's Island fan, but normally they rust out down here in the bottom of the windshield frame in this corner here on the passenger side as well, but there's no rust coming through here and that's original paint. So that's a really good sign. Another thing too on the rocker panels, same thing, they rust from the inside out down here at the bottom, they pack mud in there and, and they just rust away, but there's no rust on the outside on the bottom, but there is on the top of the rockers here, these pinholes are actually rusted through from the outside in, which is kind of surprising and pretty rare. Uh, moving on to the doors here, original paint again, and normally there'd be a rust pocket right here on the lower front of the door, None there, which I'm very surprised by, but the door frames themselves are just rusted out completely. And I think this rust, again, is from the outside in and the passenger door, it's even worse. Moving on to the quarters. These early Broncos have a two piece quarter. You've got the upper, which is actually the inner, and then you've got the lower, and then there's a seam in between the two. As you can imagine, this is a place that these trucks like to rust. There's some seam sealer here, and there's actually some original factory seam steel still in this one. All original paint, so it's actually in really good shape. Brandon, what are you finding? Well, the passenger side rocker is a little worse off than the driver's side. The top's actually all the way through up here. Um, but what concerns me is the new sheet metal that's been placed in here. At first glance, it looks okay, but it's just new sheet metal welded right to the rust, and that's a huge no-no in the industry. I mean, you might as well not replace any metal at all. Um, the door hinges themselves, every single bolt is broke off and that could have been easily avoided by some seafoam deep creep or a little bit of heat, those things would have came right out. And that's just a few examples of efforts misplaced on this project. Well, Brandon and I both said we wanted a full top on our Bronco, and thankfully we've got one that came with the one we bought, and uh, it's in original condition. Still got some Wimbledon white here, mostly worn off on the top, surface rust. It does have some dents all over and some pretty heavy rust here under the drip rail, which is pretty common, but it's repairable. Now we're not sure what we're gonna do about sheet metal just yet. So for now, we're gonna hang on to this one. Now under the hood is a 302 V8, which actually runs really well. The previous owner did a tune up on it and we didn't have a hiccup out of it all day. 
um, but that's where all the nice stuff stops. This inner apron on the passenger side has been crushed before. It's all wrinkled and this back's all rusted out and booger welded. This side, while it's not quite as bad, the apron's in good shape, the fender well, the firewall and the cowl all have original paint on them. A little bit of rust here, but it's repairable. The hood's completely trashed. It's even got the crack here like they all do. Surprised it doesn't have the strap with the rivets in it to fix it. Yeah, and I mean, it's got some upgrades like brakes, tune up, like I said, new radiator. I mean, that's fine and all if you're building a rat rod, but this is clearly something that he was trying to make a nice project. Yeah, he got a pair of fenders off an earlier Bronco, had them blasted, installed them, and then let them rust, which I just don't understand that. Yeah, I mean, this is a clear example of somebody in over their head on a project and just doesn't know how to finish it, which happens a lot. Yeah, so the best thing for us to do is just tear this thing all the way down. We're gonna get it down to the bare tub and get it blasted, see what we're working with. And that's next. Up next, teardown begins. Well, we've got our Bronco lined up with the lift here because real soon we're going to roll this thing forward and lift the body and split it off of the frame, probably for the first time in this vehicle's life. But before we do that, we've got a bunch of stuff that needs to get unbolted off of here. I mean, practically going to destroy this thing. Weapon of choice. Perfect. We're starting with the obvious, which is all the bolt on sheet metal. Well, good thing it's missing some parts. These bolts weren't even in anything. They were just sitting in there. Oh, it's gonna fold in half. Save these shims. Yeah. That's valuable. The botchery. Mm. The craftsmanship uh. and skill to do a damage repair like this is, one day I hope to get to that level. That piece helicoptered into my thumb and almost broke it. Let me help you out. Give me a croissant wrench. Let me help you out with that. Chanel locks. Really, it's just some trim and some wiring, shift linkage, steering column, radiator. It could Seats. be a free for all. All right, this is the perfect spot where you want to use some deep creep or any type of lubrication to get these bolts unstuck. These are actually captured nuts on the inside of this taillight housing, and these will definitely break off. You can see all the corrosion. So I'm just going to spray inside the taillight and get all those bolts started on getting lubricated. And I'll come back to these in a little bit. Deep creep to the rescue. Oh. Thought that was gonna break. Here, let me help you. Yeah, we're gonna need two people. You still have a bolt in over there. In these? Yeah, you gotta take yeah, those out. Yeah, that's what I was asking earlier. I yeah, couldn't remember. you gotta take them out. What Mark's talking about is the design of the tailgate. It's not a typical truck tailgate that can be removed by partially opening it. The hinges have to be unbolted completely and removed with the tailgate. Wire. There you go. Not anymore. <laughs> Wobble, baby, wobble. Now we're getting down to some of the more tedious tasks, like removing the steering column. Probably would have been easier if I took the steering shaft off, huh? The shifters. Windshield wiper assembly. Okay. Still a bunch of stuff attached to it, but. And of course, the dash. Fun. Look at that. You got it? Yep. But wait, there's more. Like the heater box, door strikers, pedal box, and the windshield. The seat's out. It's time to go up. At least we hope. Okay, the front mounts are actually stuck in the frame. The bushing's actually not letting the bolt come out. The nut's gone off the bottom, but they're seized, so we're gonna get the liquid torch out. Get them unstuck. Ready? Yep. 
you can say things are getting pretty serious now. I'm fine. Keep on going if you want to. Just make sure it's not too. Oh, no, it's... It is a little heavy in the rear, but we'll be all right. She'll never be the same. Well, that was easy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just leave that thing right there and get it out of our minds for now yeah. because we've got enough here to focus on. Man, this tub's pretty rough. Um, I think the next thing to do is get it square, put it on the rotisserie and blast this thing. Yeah, and then that'll give us a better idea of what lies ahead because from where I'm standing, this thing is pretty bad. Yeah. Up next, I'm having a blast. I see what you did there, Brandon. Well, we're outside with the Bronco on the rotisserie. We got the tub all braced up so it doesn't move on us, but we did have to cut the front clip off because of all the rust and the damage on the passenger side. We were gonna have to replace the sheet metal anyway. So I went ahead and cut it off and put it on this next set of mounting holes. And now it's time to get this thing blasted all the way down to the bare metal. That way we can see exactly what we're starting with. In order to do that, we're gonna use the dustless blasting mobile system. The DB500S has a compact layout with everything easily accessible. Their contractor support is tremendous with online and phone technical support. And this unit even fits in a standard garage for those who work at home. Now, I drew the short straw. Brandon gets to stay out here and do this, enjoy this beautiful weather. But I've got something up my sleeve inside that just showed up. I'm gonna get it unwrapped. You'll see it later. Soaking up the sunshine. This dustless blasting setup's a pretty versatile machine. Makes quick work of most surfaces, especially our Bronco and how small it is. We'll have this thing done in no time. There are basically three main reasons why we blast. One, to remove unwanted material like paint, seam sealer, and body filler. Two, to reveal body damage and remove rust. And three, to have a good base to prep for either paint or welding. And this dustless blasting system has a 60 minute runtime, which means I don't have to stop as often to refill with media. After stripping the outside sheet metal, it's time to roll this thing over and expose the real problem spots on these trucks. Every panel I've hit is straight Swiss cheese. Look at the floor. I mean, that, it's, when I tell Mark about this, he's not gonna be too happy. But I gotta keep moving, get this thing done. The more material I strip off this truck, the less that is left, which is really concerning. I'm starting to think that there's not a whole lot that's usable on this tub. And again, that's concerning but I gotta finish it off and get it back to the studio. This is blasted. I'm beat. I'm gonna change. Well, Brandon, I'm gonna give you my seal of approval on your dustless blasting job you did on this thing, but unfortunately, it revealed what we feared the most, and that was more rust than we had originally anticipated, but that's why you blast, right? Yeah, this body is extremely rough. Now, anything's rebuildable, but with so few parts that are good that's left on this thing, it just doesn't make any sense to tear it apart and put it back together, especially when new parts are readily available and super cheap. So I say ditch this tub of Swiss cheese and move on to something else. 
Yeah, so that means we're going to be building our own tub basically from a Bronco in a box and we're going to start with everything that you see here on the floor that we got from Dennis Carpenter. Now we already had all the outer sheet metal because we knew we were replacing that and some of the inner structure because we suspected that was bad as well, like the floor, core support and rockers. But now that we're going to build a whole tub, we actually don't have all the pieces we need. Yeah, there's some things that are conspicuously missing here. The firewall, all the pieces to build the cowl, the rear wheel tubs and a bunch of bracing. But we've got that stuff on order and it's coming. So why do we care so much about building such a nice Bronco? Seafoam has been a great partner of ours here at Power Nation for a long time and we've done some really cool builds over the years, but now it's time to take it to the next level. So we're building our dream Bronco and the folks at Seafoam are helping make that happen and here's how. We're excited to call this project the Beach Cruiser Bronco. It's going to be the perfect blend of classic styling and modern technology that will be able to cruise the beach, scream down the interstate and everything in between. And the coolest part is when it's all done, it's going to auction with the proceeds going to Seafoam's charity of choice, Warrior's Heart. So you guys need to come back and watch us build this Bronco literally from the ground up. If you can't get enough of our Bronco, go to PowerNationTV.com and check out our Beach Cruiser Bronco project page. We have current build status, before and after pics, links to parts used, and all the episodes right there on one page. Today on Music City Trucks, it's day one of building our new 1974 Bronco from the ground up, and we are rocking it. Smell that? It's a new car smell. <laughs> That's a new car smell? Yeah. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Brandon Burke. And I'm Mark Christ. And we're very excited because we're getting back on our 1974 Bronco project. Now, last time we made the difficult decision to just build this truck from the ground up. And we're gonna be doing that with this full custom chassis here. And of course, all new sheet metal like you see here on the floor, along with some other stuff that you don't even see yet. Now, if you missed our intro to the Bronco project, here's what we're going for. We're excited to call this project the Beach Cruiser Bronco. It's gonna be the perfect blend of classic styling and modern technology that will be able to cruise the beach, scream down the interstate, and everything in between. Now, to achieve the level of build quality that we need to on this project, we need to up our game. Now, we could just MIG weld all of these components together, but there's a better way. And to show us that better way is Chad here with Caro Liner. Chad, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me, Mark. And uh, tell me about this machine that you got here. This is Car Liner's CTR9 squeeze type spot resistance welder. It's uh, capable of 16,000 amps. It's going to give that factory appearance and make your life a lot easier on this build. It has the most squeeze pressure and the most amperage on the market currently. And the ergonomics is what really makes this machine stand out. Being able to support the weight of the gun yep. on the telescopic arm, getting in any position comfortably mm -hmm. makes a world of difference. At the end of the day, the technician's not wore out. We're literally building this Bronco from the ground up. How is this machine going to help us accomplish our goal? Well, this is going to give you the rigid factory-like spot weld appearance on all the welds. It's going to make it a quality build uh, and it's going to save a lot of time. Speaking my language. Yeah. So the machine starts with the calibration, and uh, we'll go ahead and do that by squeezing the trigger. Once the calibration is finished, it determines what arm is in place, and as we place different thicknesses in between it, it will measure and apply time, current, and pressure based on what's needed for that weld. So there's one panel that measured. Two panels, as you can see, the uh, thickness goes up along with the pressure. Three panels. We can see that the weld's starting to get bigger in circumference. And actually taking longer to weld the yeah, panel. I was gonna say longer duration too. Uh -huh. And it does that all on its own. It does that all on its own. We can also do single side welding, which we might need to use on the floor 
Um, it's not really recommended for collision standards today with high strength steel, but on this Bronco, it was made with mild steel. We, we won't run into any problems there. So what do you mean uh, single side? Is that what? Yep, so just to where there's gonna be certain times you can't get around, you can't get an arm around deep okay. enough into the panel. So we're thinking about the transmission tunnel here, the firewall, there's gonna be places that we're not gonna be able to get an arm around. Well, uh, let's, let's see what we've got as far as our truck goes and where we're starting and then we'll work the machine in. Yeah. Now in order to build an entire Bronco body from parts, you need all the parts. Now we said before that we ordered a bunch of new sheet metal from Dennis Carpenter and we've got laid out here all of the structural steel that we ordered before we did the blasting, things that we thought we would need for sure, but we're obviously missing some things. But when you get ready to assemble a body, there's a place you start and that is the front floor here, which consists of the inner rockers, the three front floor pans, and then three floor braces, which we didn't have. So we gave Dennis Carpenter a call and they said, well, we're gonna hook you up. So they sent us this entire front floor assembly. Now, they don't sell this like this. This actually came out of their department where they build entire Bronco tubs, which you can buy from them as well. Or you can just buy all the sheet metal parts from them and build it yourself. They sent us this just to save us some time. Now, this is very important because four of the eight body mounts for the entire truck go through this assembly here. So once you get this bolted on, make sure it's square, make sure it's level, then you can build the rest of the truck. Now we've already done that, we're ready to start putting this thing together. This is exciting, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm stoked. After getting the front floor mounted, we mount the rear brace to lay in the bed floor. So we just need to grind off this top coat here and we're ready to weld. Yep. Right on it. Square. And then you just open it up. Up. Like that. And then open it up. Open it up. Hey, guys. Well, we're busy building a body for our 74 Bronco here, and we've made some pretty good headway so far. As you can see, we've got a little bit of extra help here. We've got two extra people. We've got Mark Coates from ABM Restorations, and we've got Stephen Hamilton. He's a master fabricator, and both of those guys are from Kingsport, Tennessee. And we put them to work immediately, and of course, we got Brandon and Chad still plugging away on what they've got going on here. And we figured while we've got all this help, we need to get as much accomplished as possible. These panels fit really nicely, but there's always some trimming and grinding that needs to be done. Can you imagine replacing all of these pieces individually rather than just building it new? I'm, there's no way I would. Let's, let's let it down. Okay. Here, and flush it out, just hold right. it in place. With the floor pieces in place, we can move on to the quarters. Are you still working on that? No, we're good. All right, can you help me fit this tub again? Actually, let's pull it out. Okay. See what happens. Just looking at side to side, how the quarters fit and the wheel tubs, just to see. Just eyeballing it. After eyeballing all the panels, it's time to make sure they're square and prep for more welding. Don't get, don't get, don't, don't get, don't get. Don't tempt, don't tempt me, because we'll build the whole back of this thing. You guys ready for this? See it. <laughs> that fits so nice. Looks good. It looks like a truck. Oh, I, I can't believe we got this far in one day, and we, we could not have done it without your guys' help. So, thank you. Yeah, uh, so for us to start with a bare frame this morning, I mean, this was one day. Uh, this is amazing, and I really appreciate everybody's help. I know there was five of us, so that helps a lot. And I know you guys have to go, so I guess it's time to, to send you guys off, but we really appreciate your help, and we'll just pick it up from here. And I feel like we've got a great start, so. Yeah, we got a half Bronco. Yeah, we do. All right, let's get out of here, guys. Coming up next. This really gives you an appreciation for how simple these trucks are. Well, we're back here in the shop. We got the lights back on. It's a new day and we have Chad for a little longer. So let's put your skills to work with this amazing spot welder. Yeah, we're getting ready to weld some pretty thick material here. So let's put this thing to the test and see how it works.
This back corner has five panels that meet, and the CTR9 has no problem fusing them all together. Okay, let's do that on the other side. That's in there. Get this bed side on. Or the, the... Yeah, get the, get the inner quarter and tail light. We want the build quality of our Bronco to be as nice as any early Bronco out there. And we're well on our way. So we've been using the C-Tongs to spot weld everything so far, but there's some spots now that we can't get with the clamp. Uh, what do we do about that? So the Carliner CTR9 has a multi-function gun kit that has a single side option. We'll set that up. Okay. How much pressure are you applying, Chad? Well, this is why it's not recommended for OEM repair in a body shop because you can't give that adequate squeeze pressure. Right. With mild steel, we have different properties and characteristics, so we're able to use it on this. You just wanna make sure that you're pushing against something that's solid. Um, so you're, you are applying a good bit of pressure and holding it still for a second until you get that instant of orange. That's what you're looking for, is that instant of orange. Simulating what you would have with the C tone. But the duration is pre programmed. The duration so you don't have to is let go. No, you can hold the trigger. I, just because I'm holding the trigger, it's not initiating another weld. It'll only do it one time. Right. So there was one spot we couldn't get to because of a brace. So we oh, can yeah. plug this in anywhere. Yeah, so like in the floor, in the center of the floor, yes. where we couldn't reach in there, yeah. You just have to remember that you gotta press against something solid. I'm gonna say that the back of this truck's yeah. solid now. Uh, I know you gotta get going, Chad, so I just wanna say thank you for bringing the machine and showing us everything it'll do. Hey man, I appreciate the opportunity to work with you guys and get to show you the Carliner CTR9. This will definitely let this build stand apart for structural integrity. Well, that's what we're going for. I'm not gonna lie, I think I'm getting the hang of this thing. Does it look good? This really gives you an appreciation for how simple these trucks are. The guys at Dennis Carpenter really stepped up for us and this Bronco is coming together incredibly well. Oh yeah. Okay, that goes like that. So that just gets sandwiched Yep, just then we leave a sandwich like that there. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. I like that. Still a little flimsy. Yeah, it'll get there. What do we want to do next? Let's throw some measurements and make sure our door openings are correct. Should be 35 and 7 16 Yeah, it's 30, right at 35 and a half. We'll be able to scoot it closer, you know. 35, yes, yeah, this was 35 and 5 eighths. So, it's too much. That confirms that we need to go backwards with this. Up next, Brandon gets comfortable. Yeah. Now, as you can see, we got a bunch more panels clamped into place like the cowl and door. And that's because we got the quarter fully welded in and this is our starting point. So we got our nice door gap that we want. Now we can build the rest of the truck forward. But this is where panel fitment comes into place. It's a bunch of two steps forward, three steps back, moving things by eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch. Because if you take your time and get those panel gaps right, all those body lines, make sure everything's square, you're gonna have a really nice product at the end. Speaking of which, you'll notice the firewall pieces are not in right now because we tried to fit them and they didn't fit exactly the way we wanted them to. So we fit the panels that we could and that would be the cowl side pieces and the cowl upper as well as the windshield mount here. So we've got those clamped in and that'll allow us to hang this other door as well. Then we can go back and fit the firewall pieces to the cowl and then eventually weld everything up. We also have Stephen Hamilton back here in the shop it's always a good idea to have an extra set of hands, and I think between the three of us, we'll be able to knock this tub out. Yep, we're gonna have us a Bronco. Well. Oh, we're right there, Brandon. All right, if you can get those, we're there. It's gonna fit first time, watch. I don't know about that. Ooh. Uh -huh. 
bad. Yeah, the body line goes uphill from the rear to the front, yeah. so the hinges need to come down. Well, well the bottom hinge needs to get kicked in because you can see I got okay. almost three fingers before we get to this okay. post. So kick the bottom in. And then and we'll then bring the whole cow down. Drop the whole cow down. All right. Go ahead and move it where you want it to be. Let me watch just this see, side. Just see that side? Uh, it kicks it way out. Mm. Yeah, when you push that one where it needs to be, this one kicks out. That's fine right there? Yeah. That's where it's happy. Pretty happy? That's yeah. pretty good right How there. does that body line look, Steven? I'm it's kind okay. of in your way. It it's okay, it needs good. to come out. But, but I'm pushing now in. We're, now mm -hmm. we're running into the problem, we're getting a lot of leverage on the mm -hmm. firewall. Yeah, well I'm pushing in here and pulling out here and I can feel it moving yeah, a lot. It's, it's twisting the whole unit. So what do we need to do um, then? Do we just need to stop here and let's get that other side the same way? And then we can stick that firewall in there. Okay. Check it. That'd be the next step. All right, Steven, what'd you end up doing with this firewall? Well, I started out massaging the middle panels and started clique going all the panels together to where we can test fit it. And yeah, looks a lot better than it did when I was Oh yeah, it. absolutely. I think we're ready to go to the Bronco. Oh, cool. Yeah, let's fit this thing. Awesome. They got the doors kind of mocked in place. Oh, it fits pretty good over here. It's fitting good here. Dang, this this one's almost flush up against here. Let's just self tapper the bottom. All right. After Steven worked his magic on the firewall pieces, we got it all clamped in so we could finalize the door fitment. That's not bad. We can just open that hole up if we need to on the mm -hmm. fender because the yeah, right. fender looks like it fits pretty nice. All right, what's the over under on this? Moment of truth. Okay, let me get my fingers out of there. Seems pretty solid. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Look at that. How's your gap? Looks good. That's a good 3 16 right there. Same as the other side. Oh, that body line down there is straight as an arrow. Right through here? Yep. All right. There. I'm not hating it. Got a nice gap over here right now. My gap's great. Somewhere in there? Yeah. That's fine. Look at this. Yeah. Well, now that we know that the panels are pretty close to fitting, I say burn most of it in, get the windshield on it, and get the top on it, and we'll have a complete truck. So tear down the bolt-on stuff that we just did. Yeah. Do a bunch of welding. Yeah. Build it back up. I like it. Up next, with lots of help, we finish round one. Can't believe you guys put a whole Bronco together. Well, we've been busy doing a bunch of welding on our Bronco here. We've got the A-pillars welded in completely along with a bunch of other structural stuff. We don't have the firewall and cowl completely welded in yet, but we can get to that later. Yeah, we have enough of the truck welded together that is structurally sound. So while we still have Steven, we're gonna hang all that new sheet metal, including that top. Start with the doors. Hopefully it goes as easy as the first time. Uh, you mean the tenth time? I mean, I'm gonna go almost snug with two of them, and then we'll put it on the scribe line. All right. Pick it up just a little bit. Dude, we're pros at this now. <laughs> Next thing is get the other door hung, and then these fenders. We'll repeat the same thing on the passenger side and make sure the door is hung properly and the body lines are nice. Mm. Let's get these fenders on. All this sheet metal fits surprisingly well together. Can you go over and fix that? Yeah. Even though we don't need to bolt on the front clip right now, it's important for ensuring all of our body lines are perfect before we final weld everything. And let's snug them. Yeah. Yeah, because it's otherwise it's gonna sag. This is a good day. 
I need to get in there then. Very exciting. Looks good over here. A little tight against the grill here on this side. Probably just needs to be shimmed out. Yeah. Yeah. This side. I think for now that's that's not bad. It's fitting good. Let's get a top on it. Let's do it. Before we put the top on, we need to get that windshield frame installed. Then we can get the top side panel pieces clamped in. And just for aesthetics, we're throwing the outer quarters on. Alright, clamp. You like it? Yeah. Is that gonna hold up? That'll hold oh, up. Oh yeah. Alright, clamp it. I can smell the beach already, you know? Be cruising right along. So what's next now? Uh, the top. So the roof. Get... Well, we've recruited some help. Mm. Oh, I'm here. This is like the cherry on top. <laughs> that's, that's legitimate, right? Literally the cherry Literally. on top. Literally. That is by far the heaviest piece, too. It is. Oh, it's beefier than the factory one, for sure. I still can't believe you guys put a whole Bronco together. This is craziness. Keep going forward. Four. There it is. Oh, that comes in. Look at that. Dude, you're sitting in it. Dude. <laughs> you're sitting in it. Smell that? It's a new car smell. <laughs> That's a new car smell. When we started this, when we put the first piece of sheet metal on here, I did not see us being this far this soon. N no. <laughs> and I'll, I have to thank Steven and all the help we had. This thing wouldn't have came together as fast as it did if, if we didn't have this awesome team. Yeah, so. and that amazing machine. Yeah. And the right sheet metal. And the machine. And that machine. <laughs> I mean, everything came together the way it's supposed to. And I mean, just look at the finished product. It speaks for itself. Yeah, a brand new 74 Bronco with no rust. I didn't think we would be doing this, but here we are. Yeah. Next time you see our Bronco, we've got a bunch of cool stuff to show you, including a brand new Edelbrock crate engine, some sweet kicks, a transmission, transfer case, axles, and a special guest to give us his opinion on our build. You don't want to miss it. If you can't get enough of our Bronco, go to PowerNationTV.com and check out our Beach Cruiser Bronco project page. We have current build status, before and after pics, links to parts used, and all the episodes right there on one page. Today on Music City Trucks, Meekum's John Craman stops by. You're really taking a nice job with that vintage Bronco look, yet thoroughly modern underneath. Man, look at the mess you guys made here. <laughs> then it's time to install our James Duff suspension kit. Let's get the inners in. That looks amazing. <laughs> Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Brandon Burke. And I'm Mark Christ. And as you can see, we're back on our 1974 Bronco project. The last time you saw this thing, we had this beautiful body assembled with the help of some nice sheet metal from Dennis Carpenter and also our Carolina CTR9 spot welder. We're really happy how it turned out, but we've got to have some components in there to make this thing move. And the cat's out of the bag now. You can see we've got a bunch of components here on the floor that we've picked. We're going to talk about why. And to help us out, we've got our friend here, John Craman from Meekum Auctions. We're going to talk about why we chose some of these parts and the future of our Bronco. You know, it's really cool guys coming in here and seeing how you're sketching and planning this out. It to me, this is all automotive jewelry. I started with Meekum Auctions back in 2006. We went on television in 2008. So it's been over 15 years now. So as you could probably have imagined, supercharged Coyote. I mean, Coyote was the bar. We even just took it a step further with this one. 
Well, certainly since we first saw the Coyote 5 liter all the way back in 2011, it has established itself as the go-to engine for Ford upgrades. What kind of horsepower output are we looking at with this thing? Uh, it's close to 800 oh horsepower. My. In a Bronco. Love it. <laughs> oh, I would say that the Bronco market has reached fever pitch at this time. Let me get, get an example. Uh, a lot of excitement over the recent sale of Parnelli Jones' 1969 race Bronco, known as Big Ole. We knew it would be the most expensive and the best known Bronco to ever hit the auction block, and it paid off in a big way. It fetched an amazing $1.87 million, which just confirms just how popular and how cool and how sought after Broncos are right now. Now we're calling this the Beach Cruiser Bronco. Okay, all okay. right. There it is. Caribbean turquoise. Cool. Uh, it's Caribbean turquoise, Wimbledon white. Um, uh, Seafoam's our sponsor. Obviously, we've got a partial wrap going on there, and uh, that's that's kind of what we're going for. At a glance, this may look like a original stock Bronco with a lift in wheels and tires. Well, and that's what I was going to say. You guys have really done a masterful job once again of taking just the overall clean, good look of a stock unmodified Bronco and building on that theme, yet beneath all that sheet metal and up underneath, all modern state-of-the-art components. Very well done. I think taking the classic design of the Bronco and all the new stuff is really making this project timeless. So overall, what's, what's your take on now that you've seen, you've seen the body and you see we have the aftermarket chassis and you know, all the other supporting components and you kind of get an idea of where we're going with this. What's your take on on where this Bronco is gonna land as far as where the market is right now? Well, we know a couple things in regard to the Restomod Bronco market, and that is, is it's really, really hot right now. But everybody does one completely different. Everybody has their own ideas on how they should be done. What I like about this particular build, it's a little bit different from a lot of the other ones that we see, and that it is not adorned with a lot of exterior goodies. Uh, and, and that's what makes this look so great. You're really taking a nice job of that vintage Bronco look, yet thoroughly modern underneath. You know, this has really got to be a big deal to you guys uh, after all of the time and effort to create this, and it's all going to pay off at the auction. First thing I want to hear once I say that SEMA is, what is that exhaust system going to sound like? Well, that's <laughs> yet to be determined, but it's going to sound pretty gnarly, I can okay. tell you that. What I really look forward to is having you guys there in person, be able to answer questions about it, talk about it, but also to share in the excitement of what we're all hoping is gonna be a really big hammer price. We'll see you there. Up next, we begin fitting our new suspension from James Duff. Well, we had a really great visit with our friend John Craman from Mecham Auctions, and he gave us some insight on where we're headed with our Bronco, but now it's time to get to work. We got the Bronco cut off the fab table and over here on the lift. Now it's time to make this Bronco a roller and that means mounting and installing our suspension. And we got Monster Mike from James Duff here to help us out. Thanks man for coming. Hey guys, man, look at the mess you guys made here. <laughs> it's a good thing I showed up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so when looking for a suspension, we wanted something that would go fast, go slow and go anywhere because it is a beach cruiser Bronco. So what did you bring us? Well, Brandon, this is the Dual Sport Monster Suspension System from James Duff. And what does this kit actually consist of? Well, this is the high performance package and it's for a two and a half inch lift for an early Bronco. And the front actually consists of these T-Rex arms, which are a standalone product that you can buy, as well as the coil springs, shock towers, the high performance shocks. And then from there, we've got the adjustable track bar, heim steer system, and a front sway bar. What about the rear setup? Yeah, so for the rear, you've got a dual triangulated four link, and that also has high performance shocks, coil springs, it's got upper and lower shock mounts, coil buckets, and then of course a universal uh, sway bar system. Sweet. <laughs> but yeah, and you'll actually notice that there is uh, some parts here that are custom color, and uh, that was something that, that you guys wanted for your build, yep. and that uh, you did it afterwards. Yeah. And you'll see there's also some bare parts, which of course you guys have a bare frame, so you bent my arm and uh, <laughs> uh, I let you have them bare, but they normally come black powder coated. Yeah. And uh, it looks like we're missing the truss. That's right, we are. We have the truss missing, and that's because it's actually welded on to the axle over here. Uh, let's go take a look at them. 
Yeah, so what we got here is two custom crate axles built by Curry for the James Duff high performance package. And it's a nine inch and a 44? Yeah, that's right. And then on the rear, you see, we actually send the truss to Curry and then they build the whole axle with the truss and then weld it and powder coat it. Send it to you for bolt on. So all you gotta do is open the box and throw it under the truck. That's right. That's awesome. Yeah. Let's look at the front. Yeah, the front's also great because it comes with the riser bracket, which is part of the bump steer eliminator system inside of this performance package. Okay. All welded on and then of course powder coated. And it also comes with the James Duff brake package on the outside. Okay, sweet. Cool, let's get to work. Uh, yeah. We're gonna start in the front, right? Yep. So let's get the axle moved and start turning some wrenches. Yeah, let's do this. Well, we've got the front axle sitting in place underneath the truck where it's going to live, but we've got some things we've got to do here on the table first. What is that exactly? Yeah, in order to get started, you've got to get your head units assembled, which means you're going to take those bushings and you're going to put them inside the head units. All right, let's do it. All right, we're going to push this in like this. If you've got strong fingernails, and then turn it over. You go like that. It's going to push out a little bit. Oh, there you go. Yep, and then you come over here and finish it off. Now we have to go and lubricate the C bushings. It has to be 100% lubricated on the inside and out, not the sides. And the reason why we use dish soap is because as it dries out, you can just spray it and then the water rehydrates it and then. And then it's easy to clean off. It is. When it's done, yeah. yeah. When you wash your truck for the first time, it all just disappears. Okay, so what do we need to do here? What do we start with? All right, so we've got our soap and we wanna go ahead and start coating this part of the axle and that way there's lubrication on every surface that the C bushing touch. All right. All right. Now, this next point is absolutely critical. Uh, there's a top and bottom to the C bushing and that's how you get the right degree, you know, how it pivots right. on the axle. So here it says, uh, here, here it says front bottom and then if you turn it over, it says rear bottom. Okay. So on yours, front bottom, Goes I see, down. I see, I see. Yep. Okay. And now we take our starter bolt with the washer. Okay. And it doesn't matter what hole you start with, just right. go ahead and start threading it in. So these are the actual bolts that go in and they come with a lock washer. Right. Now we're not gonna use a lock washer because the bolts are gonna come back out again and we don't wanna damage the powder coat. Right. So you just put one in there and get it started. Oh, I see why we use those because you wouldn't be able to get these started without those. That's right, they're All too right. short. Okay, so now we can run these in. Yep. We're gonna actually install a radius arm now and uh, we'll do the other side as well. I guess these are the T-Rex arms. <laughs> wow, that was graceful. Thank you. Ooh. What? That looks cool. Okay. There you go. All right, now. You have to do the other side, and then we start measuring, uh, tightening up the seat yeah. caps. Okay, let's do it. Yep, right on it now. Now, while that's sitting on the ground, is that when you tighten these in? That's right. Slow and easy is the way. All right, we got the radius arms on our crate axle and now it's time to get it on the frame. All right, let's get it up here, Brendan. So these are pretty beefy coil retainers. You know, what's really nice about this whole system is that you can use it with an aftermarket frame or a factory frame and everything just bolts in as long as your coil buckets are in the factory location. Okay, that's pretty cool. All right. Keep going. All right, stop. I would prefer a little more preload. A little more? Yeah. All right. I'll take more. Mine's pretty uh, loaded. All right, I'm gonna torque the radius arms to set the front wheelbase, what's left? Yep, from there we're gonna go ahead and get the track bar installed, and then we're gonna do the steering and head to the back. Up next, our four link is starting to fall into place nicely. That'll hold it up.
We're making some great headway on our Bronco here. We went ahead and got the wheels and tires on the front and down on the ground, which is very exciting because we kind of start to see how this thing's going to look. Uh, we got the adjustable track bar in, so that centered the axle left to right where we want it. And we went ahead and got the steering box and this heavy duty Heim steer kit installed, which actually came with the James Duff suspension kit, but you can buy it on its own too. It's super easy to install. It's a direct bolt in but it's adjustable and it's easy to adjust. So if you need to do an alignment or something like that, you don't have to hassle with it. And then because of this saddle here, it maintains a stock geometry. So you don't have bump steer, which is super nice too. So for the most part, the front is done. All that's left is gonna be install the shocks and the shock towers and then the sway bar as well. But all of that stuff can wait till the end after we get the rear installed, which we're getting ready to do now. Yeah, we have stock wheelbase set at 92 inches. And the first thing we're gonna do is install these lower coil mounts onto the axle. All right, so while Brandon installs the lower coil retainers, next we're gonna put these coil buckets in place and these actually get welded onto the frame. We're gonna use this plumb bob here. We're gonna get it perfectly centered over the lower coil retainer, and then we're gonna weld it. After that's done, then it's time to mount these frame brackets, and that's gonna get your links upper and lower onto your truss, which is already welded onto the axle. Hold that. And then you watch it here and center it while yep. I get it tight. Just kind of throw that C clamp on there, give okay. me a little bit of pressure. Good right there, man. Yep. Now with the buckets tacked in place, we move on to the front link mounts. Now we just gotta tack this bracket in. Yep. Get the upper on. Yep. Gotta protect that powder coat. This is why I love four links. The lower links set the wheelbase and the upper links determine the pinion angle. And this install is pretty simple because our crate axle was already complete with the truss and mounts. All right, got the axle set where we want it, got the links in, all the brackets tacked into the frame. Now we just gotta get the coils in. Let's do it. Up until now, our Bronco has been living on a table, so this is a big moment. You good? Yeah. All right, come on down, Brandon. That'll hold it up. This installation's super easy. Now that the vehicle's supporting its own weight, it's time to mount those shock mounts, shocks, and sway bars, and this thing's gonna be what everyone wants to see, a roller. Next, just a few more pieces to the puzzle, and our Bronco becomes a roller. We're plugging away on the suspension on the rear of our Bronco here. Got the springs in it. It's time to move on to the shocks and the sway bar. Brandon's working on getting the shock mount installed now. One thing I want to talk about though that we didn't mention earlier is the brake setup on these crate axles. Now when you order these axles, they can come with upgraded brakes like ours did. We've got disc brakes all the way around. What's cool about that is these are James Duff specific and they're OEM style brakes. So they come already installed on the axle and they're easy to service. For instance, the rear brake setup here is for 97 to 01 Explorer. So if you get to drive in your Bronco and it needs a brake job, the parts are super easy to find. Now we took ours even a step further and we upgraded the pads and rotors to the EBC USR rotors and yellow stuff pads. Uh, the USR rotor just looks nice, but it's got the grooving in it there to expel all the gases and the dust. But then also the yellow stuff pads, a great all around pad. It's okay for daily drivers, but then it's also great for spirited driving or if you've got extra horsepower like our Bronco does here. Also done the same thing on the front. Now it's time to move on to getting the shocks installed since Brandon is done tacking it in over there. Uh, these are James Duff shocks that they make. They've got an entire line of shocks. They've got their classic line and their high performance line. And these are the high performance shocks that actually come standard with this high end suspension kit that we ordered. Uh, it's valve specifically for early Broncos and specifically for high performance trucks like ours. They're designed to work great on the street and off road as well. Just gonna get these things installed and we're getting close. This kit actually comes standard with two shocks in the rear, but you can upgrade to this quad shock setup, which is what we chose. Let's get the inners in. 
They recommend this upgrade if your Bronco's making 500 horsepower or more. Plus, it just looks cool. All right, let's do the other side. Put that bolt in for me. We don't really need to get all the shocks installed now for mock-up purposes, but we want to show you the install. That made it go. That looks amazing. Got it? Yeah. There you go. The last piece of the puzzle is the anti-roll bar, which is actually a really cool piece. Once we get it tacked in, we'll put the arms on for the links. Look at that. All right. Just let it hang. With the front shocks mounted, we can move on to the sway bar. You know, I'm against roll, body roll. Really? But I could be swayed. I really need to stop telling Brandon my suspension jokes. All right, so last is these sway bar stops, but we're not gonna put them in during mock-up, but they do stop the sway bar from moving left to right. Yeah, we'll do that after, you know, when we go to final assembly, right? Sounds good. All right, what's next, wheels and tires? Heck yeah. <clears throat> Well, you guys probably got a little sneak peek at our wheel and tire earlier, but let's talk about exactly what we chose. Uh, since we went with that nice big lift from James Duff, we're able to fit a 35 inch tire under our Bronco, which is pretty cool. Uh, for our wheel, we went to custom wheel outlet for a set of methods. Uh, methods are kind of the go-to nowadays. They're the modern version of a classic wheel. This is a cast wheel. This is a 305 NV, so it's actually an off-the-shelf wheel, but it looks really nice. It's got a matte black lip with a machine face. And then for our tires, General Grabber X3. This is the latest version of the mud terrain from General. And it's really great because it's got dirt, mud, and even rock capabilities, uh, but it's also good on the street because it's got a multi-pitch pattern tread. It makes it quiet when you drive it on the street. And then also it's got the siping to help remove the water. So it's even fine to drive on wet roads. Uh, so it's kind of a tire that does a little bit of everything. And plus it looks really nice. How could we not run those red letters out? I mean, this is just a great looking tire. 35, 12, 50, 17. I think this is gonna be a winner. Let's get them on here and get this thing on the ground. So with the wheels and tires finally going on, we're calling it a wrap. Well, Monster Mike, thanks for coming out and bringing these two Broncos to get some inspiration, providing us with the suspension that we got installed. I know you gave us a lot more other parts to install, but I think we're gonna do that during mock-up. I just wanted to say thanks again for coming out, donating your time and effort and knowledge to get this truck built. Yeah, no problem, guys. It's definitely my pleasure. You know, other than the extended brake lines and the bump stops, this suspension is in. Yeah, I love how it turned out. I know it's a little higher now than it's going to sit once we get the truck completely loaded down, and I can't wait to get behind the wheel and see how that thing oh, rides yeah. and drives. You know, this green Bronco actually has the same sus front suspension as this Bronco that we just built. How about you get in there and give it a drive? You can ride, Brandon. I, I, I'm riding. Shotgun. <laughs> I'll let you drive back. If we, oh yeah. If we come back. You know. See you later. Bye. Till next time on <laughs> Music City Trucks. If you want to know more about our Beach Cruiser Bronco, go to PowerNationTV.com and check out our project page. We have current build status, before and after pics, links to parts used, and all the episodes are right there on one page. Today on Music City Trucks. It's a huge mock-up show starting with an upgraded belt drive assembly. Then making that engine fit. Okay, go ahead now. Plus, roll cage. Plus wiring, powder coating, bed lining. And putting the truck back on the frame. Yes! Big show. Hey everybody, welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Mark Christ. And I'm Brandon Burke. And on this episode, we're gonna take our Seafoam Beach Cruiser Bronco and get it ready for body work, which means 
putting almost everything into the truck that needs to go in there, like our Coyote, our 6R80 transfer case, and all the other goodies that go into a project like this. Speaking of a project like this, this is a doozy of a build. And if you're just joining us, we started with a brand new aftermarket chassis, Bear, and built it up from there. We got this brand new body that we built from parts right here in the shop. We added all new suspension, crate axles, and it's looking like something, but it's still a long ways off from where we're headed. We're excited to call this project the Beach Cruiser Bronco. It's gonna be the perfect blend of classic styling and modern technology that'll be able to cruise the beach, scream down the interstate, and everything in between. Well, we obviously wanted to set the bar really high with a build like this, and we're gonna do that with all of the components, and the engine is no exception. We went with Edelbrock's supercharged Coyote crate engine. This thing is 785 horsepower, 660 pound-feet of torque. This thing is no joke, but it's not just a Coyote crate engine that they slapped the supercharger on. This is a fully built bottom end, forged crank, forged H-beam rods, forged pistons, and then of course it's got the 2650 TVS Edelbrock supercharger on top. It's got a full eight rib belt drive, so you don't have to worry about anything like belt slippage. And then it comes with all the other components that you need to get this thing installed, the controls and the wiring and everything like that. So you just hook up a few wires, add some fuel, and this thing is gonna make our Bronco scream, but we're not stopping with just this engine. Now, like I said, we went with a 6R80. Ford's been putting these behind Coyote since 2011, and they're great transmissions, but this one's a little special. This one's a level 10 bulletproof 1,000 horsepower transmission, so it's gonna be able to take all the power that our supercharged Coyote can give this. All right, we're gonna be installing the engine and trans, and we already got the Bronco moved over to the lift, all the sheet metal taken off so we don't have anything in our way. First thing to do is install these headers. Snug them down. Well, there's one more thing we want to get addressed on our engine here before we drop it into between the frame rails of our Bronco, and that is the belt drive. Now, no Coyote comes with a power steering pump, even this Edelbrock crate engine, although it does have a really nice belt drive system on it. And we need power steering and hydro boost on our truck here, so we have to add the power steering pump. The other thing we want to add is the AC compressor. With such a nice truck like this, it's gotta have AC and we wanna get all of that stuff installed now during mock-up so we don't have any clearance issues later. We're gonna start by disassembling the belt drive. This Edelbrock belt drive system uses an eight rib design. This increases the surface area of belt engagement on each pulley, which helps prevent belt slippage. This is particularly important on high horsepower applications like our supercharged Coyote. To make room for all these accessories, we have to remove some of the bosses on the timing cover. The key here is to take it slow because you don't want to cut through that timing cover. We got this new belt drive kit from Power by the Hour Performance, which is made explicitly for Edelbrock supercharged Coyotes with the eight rib setup. It puts the compressor and the alternator on the passenger side with the inner belt. And it puts the power steering pump conveniently where the alternator used to be. And then finally, the primary belt. Ready? Yeah. Like it was made for it. With the belts on, now we can get this thing mocked up in the truck, make sure everything fits and clearance where we need to. Yeah. I know. Double fingers crossed. Let's do four. <laughs> in case. Let's see how much of the inner fenders we need to clearance. Watch the radiator support too, with that alternator. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, if we have to go back any, ain't gonna happen. These headers ain't. All right. Let's just go down a little bit and try it, see what happens. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that's, that's gonna not... be a no go. Whoa. Come back. Got about a half an inch now before I'm oil pan on the cross, or the oil filter on the cross member. Let's, let's make some marks. Yeah. Of where we want to cut, things just, we want to do, pull it out, fix them, and try it again. 
All right, so our first install didn't go so great. The headers and valve covers hit the wheel tub. You can see right here, the valve cover here, and then the headers drug the wheel tub and also the firewall. So me and Mark took a few seconds, more like 15, 20 minutes to think about it. And I think we have a solution. It's to cut the wheel tub on this top flange, taking about three quarters of an inch out of it and making it bolt in. That kills a couple birds with one stone by being able to put the engine in without the valve covers hitting the wheel tub. And we don't have to scratch that firewall because we could put the header in after the fact and then just slide this piece in, bolt it in, call it good. This three quarter inch tape works perfect because it's the same width I want to take out of the wheel well and provides a straight edge for me to cut on. Okay, go ahead now. With the engine in place, the header slides right in. Moment of truth. <laughs> oh yeah, with room to spare too. Everything else looks good. Why don't we go up and uh, get the transmission on there and keep keep chugging. Yep. Obviously the flex plate's not on there, but this is mock up, so. Yeah. Let's get the transfer case bolted up. That way we can run a pattern and see. Okay. For our cross member? For our cross member. Twenty-five and three-eighths a quarter. All right. Let's check the other side. This is five and a half. There you go. All right. Just write your measurements in there. Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's to scale too. Up next, I fit our steering column and AC box, and I get to build the roll cage. Burn it in, Brandon's here to, here to play. Save the day. Power steering pump clears. Valve covers don't touch. Headers are free. And doesn't hit the firewall. I mean, it's tight, but it fits. If the hood closes, we're good to go. Other than this throttle body, which we'll figure that out later. So it's time to move on to some other things that may need require some trimming on the body, like the Hydro Boost here and a couple other things. Yeah, well, while you do that, Something just showed up, and I'm gonna go grab that. Okay, let's get that vacuum plate in there. Just wanna make sure these are lined up, because this little plate has to be in there, and we have to cut this out to match. This, kids, is why you do mock-up. It's going in. Well, I gotta say, that looks pretty good. Uh, there are still some other things that we need to get mocked up. I think I'm gonna move on to the steering column next. Brandon. Oh, look <laughs> at that. we got. Roll cage. Looks like the hard work's already been done. Oh, yeah. Well, we've got this unpainted column right now, but Flaming River is sending us a black powder coated version, so this is just for mock up. The reason we want to fit the column is so we can get the steering shaft routed to make sure there are no clearance issues between the column and the box. Good to go. We're making some good headway. Everything seems to be going really smooth. I want to start working on the AC. This is something I definitely want to get mocked up before we tear this thing apart. Now we went to Vintage Air for one of their 66 to 77 Bronco kits, which we have, but they also sent us this little dummy here for the evaporator heater case. Uh, it's just completely blank. It's super light. It's easy to, to use for mock up something like this. It's got the exact brackets on it that we're going to be using to mount the real one into our truck later after paint. And we went ahead and welded up all the holes on the firewall here on the passenger side before we put that inner fender in because there's so many holes here. There's the holes for the heater pipes to go through and all the mounting brackets for the factory case, which we knew we weren't gonna be using. So with all that smoothed out, I can mark where these holes need to be, get this thing installed and call it good.
first hole drilled, I can mark this other one. It does line up. With the AC box in place, it's time to move on to the engine controls. We'll get the wiring harness routed and a few connectors plugged in. Yep. And this is gonna go here. This is gonna live wherever that's gonna reach. So we just need to find a happy place for that. Then we need to find a home for the ECU and the fuse box. Better suit it up here. All right, so I'm working on our pre-bank cage for the Bronco, and this is specifically made for early Broncos, but it is a U-welded kit, so you have to do some measuring, trimming, and you can tell by the door bars that obviously it's a little long, so we're just gonna have to take some measurements and start cutting. I'm starting out with the mounting plates and main hoop, getting it centered in the truck. Then I'm going to tack the plates in so they don't move while I measure for the rest of the tubes. I've got the harness run through the firewall and settled on mounting positions for the fuse box and ECU. Let's test fit this battery tray just to make sure. And lastly, the accelerator pedal. Very nice. See if this works. Since no two Broncos are alike, some of the tubes are left long so you can fit it how you want in your truck. All right, the windshield's still kind of floppy. Same goes for the front door bars. We've just got to cut them to fit. All right, now that I got all the tubes tacked in place and everything where I want it, uh, I'm gonna let Mark finish weld this because I got other stuff to do. To final weld the cage, I'm using the 4220 ACDC TIG welder. TIG welding something like this is ideal because these welds will be exposed and we want them to not only be strong, but also visually appealing. a pretty consistent gap. I'm using the same machine to weld this filler panel in, which shows how versatile this Forney TIG welder is. Down towards you. Now that mock-up's done, we tear everything out. Is the floor or anything moving? Dude, nothing moved. Just the whole thing went up. Okay. Dude, this is a very big moment. Just think, this is the first time this body has ever been off of that frame. Yeah, I, I can't wait to get it over here in the prep booth, get it in some epoxy and put some color on it. I know. Well, I gotta get back in there and get that frame stripped down. Gotta yeah, get, get all get... those pretty suspension components all wrapped up. That so thing needs scratch to get out them, of here. Get that frame over to the powder coater. Yep. Up next, we'll take our Bronco frame to blast from the past and get it blasted and powder coated. Sweet. All right, got the Bronco body in the prep booth, getting it all sanded down, ready for epoxy. I just can't wait to see this in paint. And I know this might not be the most exciting part of the process, but maybe this is. Well, we've got our Bronco chassis here on the trailer and all stripped down and ready to look pretty. And we're a blast from the past in Lebanon, Tennessee, and they've got what we need. Well, they've got two big blast booths here. In this one, they've got a bunch of small parts they're working on. And in this one over here, they've got a 1950 Chevy truck cab. Check this out. Now that blasting process is great if you've got body panels that you want to remove all the paint 
rust and old body filler. So you can prep for your new body work and paint. But prepping panels for body work and paint isn't the only reason that you would blast. For instance, this is our Bronco frame right here and they've got that blasted up real nice using the little tiny glass beads which makes it a really nice satin finish on there. And the reason they do that is because that's a great place to start to apply powder for powder coat. That's what we're getting ready to do now. Powder coating is a lot different from painting because the part is electrostatically charged to attract the powder, which will later be baked on. Now for the powder we're using on our chassis here, we decided to go with prismatic powders. They're known for having really high quality powder. And not only that, they're really good at custom colors. In fact, they've got over 6,500 custom colors in stock. Now we chose a pretty simple black on purpose on this, but if we wanted to go with something crazy, chances are they would already have that in stock. But if not, you can always send them a sample and they can make you your own custom color, which is actually pretty cool. With the powder applied, it goes in the oven. And when it comes out, it's baked to perfection. Powder coating is great because it looks nice and it's stronger and more durable than paint. Yeah, I'm happy with that color I picked, I'll tell you that. Well, that was a blast, but I'm glad we're past it. We've got our chassis back here in the shop, fully powder coated with a fresh coat of black. And I gotta say, I love the way it looks. But even more than that, on a build of this quality, you have to have a powder coated chassis just to elevate the build to where you need it. Now, this thing is ready for its next journey. And that's gonna include getting the body mounted onto this thing for the final time. Can't wait. I give our tub a nice coating of bed liner on the underside. And then it's time to marry that body to the frame. What a great day. All right, our Bronco just made a huge transformation. It's now in full epoxy and it looks amazing. It's super straight, which is gonna be great for us during body work. But our next step is to get this thing taped up and bed lined on the underside. That's gonna protect us from rocks, sound, heat, all the elements. Then once the bed liner's done, we're gonna be putting it back on the frame that Mark just brought back and get this thing ready for body work. So let's get this thing bed lined. Masking up for bed liner is a tedious process because you don't wanna get it where you don't wanna get it. This sprayable bed liner is great because quite honestly, it's hard to make a mistake. All right, well here's the finished product. It looks really good. Now this kit does a full size bed, but apparently it also does the complete underside of a Bronco, which is really nice. And this material is gonna protect a vehicle like this just in case it goes off road from, like I said, any rocks or damage, et cetera. Now, one of the reasons why we did the undercoating before we made it to the frame is because if you know Broncos, they move. And once this thing's in body work, we don't want to take that off the frame again and misalign those panels or after paint, risk scratching this thing. Now that the Bronco's all in one color, you can tell how straight it is. And with this epoxy on there, it gives you that nice rust prevention and a really good foundation to build all your body work on. So now the next step is just to get it on that frame. With the frame masked off so we don't get overspray on that new powder coat, it's time to marry the body to the frame. Yes! Well, our Bronco is married to the frame forever. It's never coming back off. We also got all the panels bolted up 
and our gaps pretty much roughed in where we want them. Yeah, it looks like a Bronco now, and it makes me want to just like throw all the axles and suspension back under there and the drivetrain and just like go take it for a spin, but we can't do that yet, can we? Not yet. Next time we work on this thing, it's gonna be a big show. We got some experts coming in, helping with body work, and we're gonna get this thing painted in a week. Yeah, that's no joke. But for now, I'm just gonna yeah. enjoy it the way I'm it is. I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm gonna take my break. If you wanna know more about our Beach Cruiser Bronco, go to PowerNationTV.com and check out our project page. We have current build status, before and after pics, links to parts used, and all the episodes are right there on one page. Today on Music City Trucks. We've got Chris Ryan and team from Ryan's Rod and Custom to help get our Bronco body all the way from epoxy to paint. And in the booth we go. And let me tell you, that Caribbean turquoise looks sick. I love that color. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Brandon Burke. And I'm Mark Christ. Now, last time you guys saw the Bronco, we put it on the frame, got all the panels hung. Now it's time to get it from epoxy into bodywork and prime. And at the end of the week, paint and clear. So to help us do that, we brought Chris Ryan and his crew. You guys know them. They do excellent work. Thanks for coming out. Man, anytime. We appreciate you having us here. So I, I brought two of my best guys here, Danny and Dolph. And with the help of Mark, who's the body and paint expert, we'll have this thing shiny by the end of the week. It's going to be a long week. Let's get to it. First thing we need to do is get the roll cage out, and that means cutting the tack welds on the base plates. Gaps, making sure we got our gaps even. We just uh, cleaned out the holes on that side of the hood. Hopefully we brought the side of that hood down some, Dolph, yeah, right? We brought it down for a good little bit. I think we'll be all right with that. Well, in the perfect world, it'll be 3 sixteenths and even. We'll get it at first prime by this evening. I hope so. The guys doing the sanding do all the work, but the guy pulling the trigger is the hero. Yeah. Nobody asked who sanded for four days. They said, yeah. who painted who, who, that? Who painted that? First, we're going over the epoxy with 180 grit. With the uh, epoxy, we're in the window now and uh, we don't have to sand it before we apply our filler on top of it. But <clears throat> we did not personally assemble this vehicle, so I wanna make sure how straight it is. So it's kind of giving us an idea how straight it is. So when we go over pattern, you can see some of the shiny sticking through, that means we're low right here already. So we know we're gonna need some filler in this area right here. I mean, it will promote adhesion, although we don't have to do this since we have an epoxy on it right now. We've been uh, building hot rods and custom cars and Broncos for 21 years now, so full time. Uh, we've done our first Coyote Bronco about seven years ago, and uh, we did it for a somewhat local guy for us, and uh, it was an experience trying to drop a Coyote in the Bronco for the first time. So as you know, things don't quite fit like they should. So, What do you think about our Bronco? I was pleasantly surprised when I walked in this morning. You know, I know how difficult these are. I know aligning that sheet metal without a roof is very difficult. Um, so when I walked in this morning, I was a little, uh, uh, you know, actually I was pleasantly surprised, put it that way. So y'all did a jam up job assembling, putting it together, especially panel by panel. So yeah, I think you got a good base here for us to work from and it's not gonna be too difficult to get, us, get this thing in paint by the end of the week. Well, we certainly appreciate what Chris said about the body being straight. Hey, when you start off with good panels and gaps, you end up with a base that doesn't need a whole lot of attention. So we're addressing the areas that actually need it and then moving on to super build. While I'm mixing the primer, the guys are spreading the last bit of needed filler using a lightweight glazing putty.
Now that we've got all the larger areas done, we gotta hit all the cracks and crevices. Now that all that's done, it's time to mask up for the first round of polyester primer. Well, the next round of primer is gonna be this high build. This is a four to one polyester primer. It's basically a sprayable body filler. What's great about this is it's gonna give us a really good level surface to work with and we can block that down and move on to the next step. Here you go, bud. All right, we're gonna mix this super build up. Four parts primer to one part catalyst. The reason why we use poly on a high-end build like this is because this primer doesn't shrink like a 2K urethane high build would, giving us the ability to build up the surface enough to block everything flat, hopefully in one go around. Now this super build is very forgiving. You can lay it down heavy and usually in three coats. Man, that looks good. I'm sure glad I didn't have to do that. Up next, Dolph puts on the finished sand and we get closer to spraying some color. We're anxious to see it color and done. All right, day two. Yesterday was a big day. We got the Bronco in poly. Now we got to guide coat it, block it down, and make this thing straight. So let's not waste any time and get this thing going. The reason for guide coat is it gives you a gauge while sanding to find all your high and low spots. When you remove all the orange peel, which is the texture left behind from the application of primer, the surface is level. All right, well, we're pretty much done with 80. I just got this corner left because I've been taking my time making sure it's perfect. They kind of went around the truck pretty fast, but, you know. That's a solid C minus, but, you know, keep up the good work. Well, we got the rest of the truck re-guide coated and they're gonna go around with 180 to get all these 80 grit scratches out. I really love the taste of super build in the morning. Really gets me going. All right, so we're done with the 180 sandpaper. Now we're masking the truck back up so we can go ahead and put that finished sand on there. That's gonna be our last round of primer before we 320 and 400 and then we're ready for paint. I think we got it straight enough right now that we can uh, probably throw in two or three coats of finished sand and get uh, 320 and 400 and be ready to rock and roll with some paint then. Danny stole my tape. Finish sand is still a polyester primer, but it's a lot thinner than Superbuild. What Doff is spraying right now is Finish sand. It's a hybrid polyester primer. It's less heavy than the Superbuild, but still a polyester, so it's gonna give us that nice finish, not as much orange peel to sand off like the high build. You can tell this finished sand isn't as a high build as a super build because of how it's laying down. Yeah, it, uh, it came out slick, man. We got it down to 180 now, and this final finish ought to fill in any other minor little imperfections. Yeah, and that finished sand's uh, still a polyester, right? It is. It's just not as high as build as a super build. So, uh, you know, uh, we don't need the fill that we required previously. So, uh, we should be able to take this to 400, and even if we were doing a metallic or a pearl, we could run it to 600. Easily with, with just with finished sand. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you can tell it doesn't have as much orange peel as that super build. No, it's laying down much slicker. We're anxious to see it in color and done, you know? Uh, you guys are great, a great team. You guys work good together. And I'm glad you guys came out. The 
truck's looking great. Cool. I'm glad we could help. You know, and it was a great experience for these guys, you know, the first time here. Yeah. So, and I know they were stoked just to even be here and do this stuff. So. But they busted their butt all week so far, you know. So it's going to be a lot of hard work. But in the end, when you see it on TV and you see the SEMA, man, be, Dolph will be like, yeah, I painted that. I was into that, you know. It's all worth it at the end. Right on. <laughs> Up next. Perfect technique. Won't spew any. I really like it. I think it's going to look good on the Bronco. Showtime. All right, day three. We're done with 320. We're moving on to 400 grit. And we're going to be doing that as our final sand. And one of the reasons why we can get away with 400 grit is because we're using a solid color, not a metallic or a pearl. Right. If we were shooting a metallic or a pearl, we'd carry it the whole way to 600 to ensure that those flakes or those pearls lay down evenly. So we're going to knock this out with 400, blow it apart, get it cleaned up, slam it in the booth, and make it shiny. Sweet. Let's do it. During final sanding, you really want to focus on not flattening any of your radiuses or edges and keeping those body lines crisp. Before the body is fully prepped for paint, we want to double check fitment on the top so we don't run into problems down the road. All right, I'm coming down. All right, day four, we're pretty much done sanding on our Beach Cruiser Bronco. We're gonna be taking the front clip off, and I'm not gonna lie, we're gonna be throwing paint on this thing today. Don't worry, Brandon, we got this. Go get yourself a coffee. All right, well, I need energy. Let's go, out front. Let's walk out this side. There we go. Well, we destroyed that quick, didn't we? Oh, uh, we're just putting some seam sealer in all these gaps and cracks here to, uh, prevent water from getting inside the truck and prevent rust. Well, anybody can paint if you have great bodywork and the gun is set up perfectly and the body works great and the temperature is great and the barometric pressure is great. What I'm going to go over right now is proper spray pattern and what the adjustments are on the gun. Every gun is pretty much the same. This is kind of my weapon of choice right here. On the gun, we have a fan pattern, a fluid adjustment, and an air adjustment. I said most are the same. And all of them depend on each other. So we're gonna go over a couple pattern differences right here. See, that's a nice, big, even fan. That, I could narrow it down a little bit to make it a little tighter, just to show you how the pattern affects it. We can also, if we go with a more air, we get what we, or less air, you'll see it just spit out. And I'm going to extremes here. We crank up the air. You see how it's heavier on the top and the bottom. What's happening is we're blowing it past the air horns right now. It's creating a heavy pattern on top and the bottom. So we'll cut the air a little back a little bit. Too much. To get a proper cigar shaped pattern. Now I'm a fast painter, so I want my fluid wide open and I want to control my speed for my pattern. So if, I'm, if you're a slow mover, you might want to uh, cut back on your volume a little bit and uh, so you're not dumping as much product on the panel. And in the booth we go. It just gives us a nice uniform base for coverage. This is our activator. Like I said, it's a four to one product. Once Dolph puts a cap on it, we're gonna load in the gun and rock and roll. Right now we're just doing a final tack and inspection, look for any little imperfections that we might have missed picking up any dust and contaminants. Just our last inspection before we seal it and get ready to put some base on it. I guess I did a pretty good job cleaning it up. All right, still fairly clean. The first step, sealer. All right, now that the sealer's dry, we're gonna mix up some of this uh, Caribbean turquoise chroma base and uh, get Chris back in the booth spray and turn this thing green. Perfect pour. Yeah, that's a, it's gonna look really good on that Bronco. Looks vintage. Uh, this is a slow base maker. 
for the base coat, just basically to reduce it. It mixes one to one. Look at that, perfect technique. Don't spew any. I really like it. I think it's gonna look good on the Bronco and kind of lend itself to the, the air it came from. It's gonna look really good. And finally, this is the moment where a concept of the build becomes reality. Seeing this color on this Bronco is a reminder of where we're headed with this build, and also the heritage of the Bronco. So yeah, this is pretty exciting. All right, our base is on. That's gonna be the color and it looks amazing. Now we gotta get that clear on to make it shine. You guys are gonna tag team it, right? Right on, man. Dolphin and I gotta get in there and uh, tag team that 72500 clear and make quick work of it. The clear coat we're using is as good as it gets. It's a high solids clear, which is gonna give us more UV protection and a deeper appearance than other clears. Up next, Brandon takes the reins on the clear coat and does a spectacular job. Well, thank you, Mark. Sure thing, buddy. All right, day five, the tub and doors are done. The bottom side of the hood's been painted. Looks good. I'm blown away by how nice this thing turned out. This is better than we ever imagined, so thank you guys for coming, but we're not done yet. No, we still have the fenders, the tailgate, and the grill, so let's get this thing wrapped up and all the paintwork done. Hey, no, come back. Now this is where the styling cues of the early Bronco start to pop. The reason we picked this color, Caribbean Turquoise, is not only does it look cool, it was a factory option in 1966, the first year of the Bronco. Now that's cool. I love that color. That Sato 5500X is really throwing a big fan and laying that color down nice. It's gonna look good. Well, I was able to persuade Chris to let me take the reins for the final coats of clear. Let's see if I can match his ability behind the gun. Oh, yeah, that looks awesome. You guys done? About time you got here. Well, I know I joke about not doing any paint and body work, but I did chip in, I did some taping, and I did some sweeping, but that's about it. So that means that the four of you guys did the rest and it looks absolutely amazing. Chris, you and your crew knocked it out of the park. I can't believe it looks this good. Well, I appreciate it, Mark. It's always a joy to be here at Power Nation. I'm fortunate to have the talented crew behind me that helped knock out this bad Bronco in one week. Yeah, I don't think the one and a half people we got would have been able to knock this out in five days, so. Five years, maybe? Look, time's relative. Yeah, but that corner up there looks really good. Super straight. <laughs> Top of the fender as well. Well, I guess it's time for us to get out of here and get back to the big time of 96, grab a couple cold ones. All right, I need a vacation.
All right, I might as well go too, but I'll probably end up cleaning up first. Today on Music City Trucks, we'll install our engine, transmission, and transfer case, head back to blast from the past, plus get a professional cut and buff from the guys at Sonax. But first, in honor of our Seafoam sponsored Bronco, our special guests will talk about the Warriors Heart Foundation and its mission, and we'll touch on how all the auction proceeds will go directly to its cause. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Brandon Burke. And I'm Mark Christ. And we've got an exciting show for you today. As you can tell, we're back on our 1974 Bronco project here. We just recently got it all painted up nice. And it's time to start reassembly, which is very exciting. We're going to start stabbing some things in the engine bay, inside the truck as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. But before we can get to that, we've got some very distinguished guests here with us. Yeah, we got two veterans deeply rooted in our Bronco project, Tom Spooner and Jamie Caldwell. So glad you guys are here. Man, thanks for having us. Yeah, this is great. We are, we're honored to be here and honored to be a part of this project. You know, Tom and I go way back, uh, lots of time in the military together, lots of deployments together, and now in our afterlife, uh, you know, my ties with Seafoam and Black Rifle Coffee, and then, you know, getting to go down to Warrior's Heart and visit Tom and be a part of this project. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. Yeah, so like, like Jamie said, just all the time that we spent together, and then now in our, I guess we call it our post-retirement after life you know i'm very involved in one of the founders of warrior's heart and uh you know which is the inspiration uh from this whole build me and mark are so proud to be building this truck and we've been putting long hours because we want this truck to represent warrior's heart and hopefully it's absolutely coming along that way yeah yeah this is it's going to be amazing i mean when this thing is sitting on the auction block one, whoever wins it, whoever gets it is, is going to be, you know, an unbelievable vehicle to have. But the, the, the background behind it and what really gets me is, you know, I, I visited Warrior's Heart and I've been down there and I've taken guys fishing and to see what happens down there and to know that all the proceeds from this, from this whole project, this great build is going to go to help numerous guys and get them back, you know, on their feet, some of them off the street you know, but just get them right. And it's just, I mean, it's amazing. I, you know, you, you can't, you can't even believe what this, what you guys are doing, what everybody involved is doing. I mean, you can't put a price on it, but it is literally going to save guys' lives. And it absolutely will through the foundation. Every dollar goes towards a human being. Uh, you know, not, it's not one of those things for awareness or this and that. It's like, uh, that's how you get involved is by helping other human beings. That's why we're all doing what we're doing. And that's how the viewers and everyone else will be able to get involved with the auction. So it's just an incredible deal. Yeah, and that's something else too for our viewers, Tom, yeah. that aren't familiar with Warriors Heart Foundation. Yeah. Could, you, could you describe it briefly? Yeah, so Warriors Heart Foundation, the, the meat and potatoes of it is it subsidizes treatment costs uh, for our veterans and our first responders, so our protectors. Uh, so, you know, those professions, uh, they're pretty tough, you know, and, um, and a lot of our protectors, you know, from 9-11 to a 911 call, um, you know, they get beat up pretty good and get banged up and some of them uh, begin to self-medicate and it just end up in a bad spot. And uh, so Warriors Heart Foundation subsidizes those treatment costs uh, to get assistance that they need. Uh, it also uh, helps educate the local community there around Bandera, Texas. Uh, and it also helps fund uh, canines for folks that, you know, need s service animals. And you guys have had almost 2,000 people come through now? Yeah, so at Warrior's Heart, we've had uh, 2,000 warriors come through since we started in 2016, you know, and, uh, and none of that is possible without the, uh, you know, the American people supporting our protectors along the way. So like Jamie had mentioned, you know, we had all walks of life from uh, folks that, you know, really on the bottom, you know, coming from homeless uh, all the way that, hey, they just need a little assistance along the way. So it's, uh, we're just grateful to be able to provide, you know what I mean, that support uh, to those that support all of us and all of our families and all of our communities in our country. It's just kind of a, it just makes sense, you know. 
Well, thank you guys both for your service and thank you for stepping up and creating such an awesome organization. And we're really honored, like Brandon said, to to be part of this this whole project to, to help out. Absolutely. So not only is this Bronco being sold at Mecham Auctions with the proceeds going to Warriors Heart Foundation, but we also have a 2021 Bronco that you could win. So just go to our website, powernationtv.com to find out more. We're gonna get started building this truck and we'll see you guys hopefully uh, at Mecham. That Definitely. sounds good. That would be, that'd be excellent. We'd love to be there. Thank, Thank you guys you very, very much. Yeah, yeah, very nice really to meet you. Really appreciate it. Thank nice you for everything. Too. Yes, yep. Now y'all can finally get back to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, we Cerakote the headers, powder coat the roll bar, and bedline the tub. Where do you want it? Probably right there. All right, I got to run. All right. Well, we got the Bronco pretty much stripped out and getting it ready for bed liner. It's pretty much the same process as doing the underside, a bunch of masking and sanding. So all there is is get to it. All right, going up. Well, we're here at Blast from the Past. Of course, this is where we brought our frame to have it powder coated. We've got some other things like our roll cage we want to get coated and some miscellaneous things here. One of the things we want to point out, you might have noticed back at the shop, we had all the suspension tore back out from underneath the truck, which we kind of didn't want to do, but we felt like it was a little too much turquoise. Once we got the paint spray and everything back under there, it was just really too much. So this is already powder coated, so this doesn't have to get blasted like that roll cage does. So this stuff will go right into the powder coat oven and uh, get coated up nicely, along with some other miscellaneous things we have. Our first order of business is to get everything blasted and prepped for coating. Now normally when we come here to blast from the past, we get things powder coated. Well, we are doing that, but we're also gonna do something special today. That's gonna be for our headers, and that's something called Cerakote. Now that's a ceramic coating, and a lot of times you hear about headers that come ceramic coated, there's a reason for this. It's a high temperature coating, so it's not gonna discolor once the exhaust goes through its heat cycle, not only that, it's gonna look really nice. Cerakote is an innovator in ceramic-based coatings, which can be used for a lot of different applications, including trim, chassis and suspension parts, and engine components like our headers. Now, Cerakote offers several different lines of ceramic coating, uh, but what we chose is the Glacier Series, and what's cool about that is, you don't have to bake it. Once you spray it on, you let it air dry, and then it's basically done after that. So we're gonna let this dry a little bit. Those will be ready to go. Well, last time we were here, we had our frame coated with that black color, and I mentioned that Prismatic has over 6,500 different custom colors. So we actually picked one of those ourselves, and that is what they call almond white, and it's a really close, exact, really, match to our uh, Wimbledon white. That's gonna be our accent color on our Bronco here. So we got some of these components that need to be really durable, like the roll cage and our spare tire carrier here that we got from James Duff. Along with all that stuff that was turquoise that we decided was too much turquoise, guess what? Those are all gonna be that white color too. Now it's time to move on to the powder. As beautiful as that turquoise is, we can't go wrong with this prismatic almond white powder coat. Well, this stuff looks really amazing. It's all baked on now, all that prismatic powder coat. We've got the cage done and we got the Cerakote on the headers. This stuff needs to cool a little bit and then we can take it back to the shop, start reassembling. All right, well, we got the inside of the truck prepped and masked off, even got it all seam sealed, so we're ready for bed liner. Now, the kit we're gonna be using, we got from Summit Racing. It's a SEM rocket kit, so you could brush it on, roll it on, or even spray it on. It comes with the gun, so that's what we're gonna be doing. Now, the cool part about this kit is it's tenable, so you can put your base coat, so you can match the outside or whatever color you want. All you gotta do is mix it in the right ratios and you're ready to go. Now, when applying this bed liner, you might wanna take your time using light coats and with 15 minute flash times in between, because if you put it on too thick, it will run. And that's no bueno. As you can see, the second coat really makes this color pop. And it also shows one of the reasons why we decided the suspension made for too much turquoise. And hey, 
We like turquoise. Next, the guys from Sonix are here to give our Bronco that ultimate mirror-like finish. Well, as ready as I am to start assembly here with our Bronco and start getting the drivetrain installed and everything, we can't do that quite yet because there's one major thing that we want to get done before we do that. We want to get this beautiful turquoise paint finished off really nice with a slick shine. And to help us do that, we've got Cole here and Jason from Sonax. Guys, thank you so much for coming in to help. Thanks for having us, Mark. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. We're excited to be here. Um, we're getting this truck ready for SEMA, as everybody knows. And to do that, we have to use the Sonax polishes and compounds to get this to a mirror-like shine and finish. But first off, to get us ready for that, we have to wet sand. All right, well, let's get cranking. When you look really closely at the paint surface, which sometimes requires using a light, you can start to see the imperfections and the rough surface, which we call orange peel. That's when you can get a rough idea of how much work it will take to get to the finished product. So the whole point of wet sanding is, yes, the paint is already shiny, but if you look close at it, you can kind of see what we call orange peel. And if you look at the orange peel, it's kind of a dimply, it's a smooth surface, but it's kind of dimply. Um, the whole point of wet sanding, it gets out the, the trash that might be in the paint, and it also smooths out the, that orange peel to give you a true mirror-like, smooth, slick finish. Sanding can be a tedious process, but it's necessary so we can move on to the compound and polish to ultimately reach that beautiful finish we all want to achieve. Now I've got this fender cut down with 1500 wet. What that did is get rid of all of that orange peel and any of the trash that was in there. It's nice and smooth now. It's not shiny yet, but we'll get to that later. We just need to get the rest of the panels cut down with the same 1500 wet, and then we can go back and start buffing. Okay, after a long day of sanding the Beach Cruiser Bronco, we came in this morning and noticed there's a few spots that you can see here in the paint uh, that need a little more attention. So we're gonna come in today, hit it with a little more aggressive sandpaper and get it smooth that you can see here on the right side. So we basically want these to look identical. It doesn't matter the color of the paint, dark or light, the orange peel will be there. And here we have a chance to really make our top color pop. All right, so what we've done is we've wet sanded the vehicle with a thousand grit sandpaper. We're hitting it with a purple wool cutting pad using our ultimate cut product. We're then following back up with a step number two that will remove any sanding scratches left behind with ultimate cut with a yellow pad and our perfect finished product. Now you start to see the clarity of the paint coming through with the reflection of Jason's hat, along with everything else reflecting in the light. All right, so as you can see, I've used the Ultimate Cut Compound to finish the top of the door. Uh, we've removed all of our 1200 grit sanding scratches. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna remove our pad. We're gonna switch to our yellow Sonex Medium Cutting Pad. We're gonna use our Perfect Finish product. This will remove any micro scratches left behind from the Ultimate Cut, and it'll give us a absolutely brilliant finish. Well, Jason, Cole, I think you guys did an awesome job on the tub. You know, we're excited about how it turned out. We can't wait to see it on the floor at SEMA and at the Mecham Auto Auction. Yeah, I think it's going to blow people's minds and how nice this truck's going to be. And I think me and Mark can get the rest of the panels with the techniques and advice you guys showed us. So I think we got it. We'll leave you some product and turn it over to you guys. All right, sweet. I think we got the work cut out. <laughs> Next, our supercharged Edelbrock engine goes into its home for good. Rad. 
Well, if this isn't a rad color combination, I don't know what is. We got the cage in it, we got all the suspension back under it. And I'm gonna say changing the control arms to white was a good decision. Definitely, yeah. I'm really glad all that paint and body work and cutting and buffing and all that's behind us right now. Uh, my, my voice is cracking. These late nights have really been wearing on me, but we're getting down to the part that's my favorite part of the build, and that's gonna be the nuts and bolts of final assembly. And we've got a special guest here. We've got Mark Campbell with Edelbrock Group. Mark, thanks for coming in. Thank you very much. Very glad to be here. Well, obviously, we're going to talk about the Edelbrock Supercharged Coyote crate engine that we've got here that's going in our Bronco and all the components that came with that and some of the other things that have been going on with the Edelbrock Group. So let's start with the engine. Absolutely. Well, that's the most exciting part for sure. Um, we got our five liter supercharged Coyote crate engine here. Um, pretty exceptional piece. Uh, the, the really cool part about this engine is it's all brand new. I mean, there is not one used part inside of the engine. So you really get a, a lot of value out of uh, everything that you get here for sure. Yeah, so this is a package, and, and this is kind of a premier package as far as crate engines go, right? Absolutely. This is one of our top-of-the-line engines that we have. Um, certainly, obviously, one of the more expensive engines, but also one of the most powerful engines that we have. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it starts out with a foundation of a brand new block from Ford, a brand new crankshaft from Ford as well. And then we put some really high-end forged rods and pistons into it to handle all the boost that we're going to put through it. And uh, that's, the, that's kind of the meat and potatoes of it right there is our, uh, our Edelbrock 2650 series supercharger on top that makes all the power. Now, our Broncos, like you, you mentioned, being a high-end crate engine, our Bronco is a high-end Bronco, but yep. if we were building a Bronco that maybe wasn't going to SEMA or wasn't going to auction, you know, you guys offer other crate engines like we actually considered, yep. um, the, the 302, which would be a very obvious choice for an engine like this. Absolutely. We have a whole gamut of different crate engines for sure, starting out with some basic 300 horsepower small block Chevys and big block Chevrolets and Fords. So yeah, we really have a good cross section no matter what kind of horsepower you're looking for, what kind of budget you have, um, we pretty much have them all. And they're all in different stages. You can get carbureted, fuel injected, with all the accessories on the front, with just the basic engine. I mean, however you want it, we have all those options. Um, so, so we've covered the engine itself, and, but that's not all that comes with the kit, right? We've got everything here on the table. Let's talk Absolutely. about some of that stuff too. Yeah, so I mean the engine comes kind of complete the way you see it here, and then all of this other stuff helps make this thing complete. So we do use a factory Ford ECU. We've reflashed it with the tune specifically for this engine. And then you have the complete wiring harness with everything you need to put this thing together. You're basically putting power and ground and a switched power to this harness. Um, you got all the stuff for the intercooler, the pump, all the hoses. Obviously, we got the oil to put the engine, put in the engine. Um, and kind of a couple different scenarios on airbox. We do have a factory style airbox if you have room for that or we do also have a more of a universal kit, which is probably gonna be a lot more popular for most installs, especially this one being that <laughs> engine space is a little bit limited for sure. We're at the point now where well, we're ready to put the engine in and since you're here, do you wanna give us a hand? And... Well, absolutely. I mean, right. I, I love getting my hands dirty, so let's, uh, let's do, do it. it. This is it. Careful with the firewall, Mark. Yeah, I see it right there. Okay, throttle body's gonna get, get in the way now. We're gonna have to tilt it. They'll tilt it back. You want me to get under it? Yeah. All right. Go down. Go down with yeah, it? I'm pretty close to here. Go down. What was that? I think it was just the spring. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's just sitting on the front cross member. Yeah, that's fine. So it's, it's fine. That's fine. Uh, Track bar's kicking everything because it's not sitting. Right. If we can put the motor mount nuts on and just leave them loose. Yeah, we just could so do that. that nothing falls out. We could do that. I think it's sliding on this power steering pump, or the sorry, the AC. I'm good on the driver. Uh, good try it. The block itself looks straight back here. Let's get this header on. Okay. All right, we're good. Say we unstrap it. Car victory. I think so. Well, it's nice having some good help around here for a change. Hey, now. <laughs> you act like you've done this before, Mark. A couple times. Yeah. What's maybe, your background? Maybe not putting a coyote in a Bronco. Right. But yeah, it looks like it's going to be a pretty awesome uh, vehicle when it's all done. Well, it was cool having you here. It really was. Thank you. Excellent. We appreciate it. Thank you.
Now we move on to our transmission and transfer case. Are we going up? Yep. You got it started? Yep, a little bit. All right. This thing's going in pretty easy. It's taking a while. Ratchet's really cute, Brandon, but yeah. um, well, give me the socket. Got something you, a little you better like for you. The here. Manual labor. Well, you know, when you've got tools like this, <laughs> why would you use tools like that? What I love about these impacts, especially this little stubby one, other than the fact that it saves time, is. I know I can rely on it. Tight area, big power. This thing's been around forever, too. Bring it down. Seems kind of heavy duty. It is really heavy. All right. All right, let me get this. That's it. Well, all the drivetrain's in. Yeah. Axles, suspension, bodies on the frame, roll cages in. All we have to do now is just everything put, else. Put the thing together. <laughs> Seats and Save wiring and time. air conditioning, plumbing, and radiator, lights, trim, wheels, tires, brake lines, fuel system. <sighs> Not much. Today on Music City Trucks, we get our Bronco closer to done with an AC system, door components, wiring, a cooling system, and the start to our amazing new dash. Man, that looks good in there. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Brandon Burke. And I'm Mark Christ. And as you can see, our Beach Cruiser Bronco is coming along nicely. Uh, we got it painted up, we got it shined up, and we've got all the drivetrain installed, the axle suspension, engine, transmission, transfer case. Uh, and it looks like we're ready to just start installing body panels, but we don't want to do that just yet because with those out of the way, we can get a lot of other things accomplished. In fact, we've got some things done since you saw it last. We got our Hydra Boost installed here for the final time. We've got the engine wiring harness in there as well as the ECU. Now that's not the only wiring that's gonna go in this truck. So we have the entire body harness that still needs to get ran and terminated. We still have to wire up the dash and actually just build the whole dash. So we have the original one over there for reference. We even got to build the doors. So we have most of the components out here on the table. And what we don't have here, we're gonna rob from the original doors as well. Now, the Bronco is a pretty simple vehicle and you can see all the components that go into just one door. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I mean, just what you've covered so far. Uh, in fact, I made a phone call to one of my buddies. He's gonna be here in just a little bit to help us out. Uh, but other than all of that, we still have a ton of plumbing to do and that's what I'm gonna tackle first. In fact, specifically the AC system. Uh, this, what you see here on the table, we got from Vintage Air. This is a kit for 66 to 77 Broncos. Um, it's a much more modern kit than you would have been able to get back in the 60s and 70s. And if you'll remember, uh, we had a mock-up version of this case here when we did our mock-up, uh, but this one's the real deal. It's got the blower motor in here. It's got the evaporator core and the heater core in there. It's got the plenum and all the outlets for our ducting. Uh, but the coolest part about it probably is that it's all electric. Uh, so it's got this little control box here as well as all the servos that uh, modify your doors, your blend door, your temp door, as well as your um, blower motor speed. So it's pretty cool. Uh, but we do have some things we need to do to this thing before we can get it installed for the final time. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that here on the bench, get this thing in the truck. Man, that's cool. Brandon's lame joke notwithstanding, one of the things we need to install are the mounting brackets. This bracket, which bolts the unit to the firewall, interferes with the fittings on the heater core, so we need to go ahead and get those fittings installed now. A little ester oil will keep the O-ring from getting pinched during installation. With the fittings tight, we can install that bracket. 
Since they will be too difficult to put on once the unit is installed, I'll go ahead and get the heater hoses on, leaving them a little long so I can trim them to fit later. And since I mocked this up earlier, all the holes are there, so we just need to get the hardware in. Well, I mentioned I had a buddy coming in. Well, he's here. This is Ben with Smithson Speed and Engineering. Ben, thanks for coming to help us out. Oh yeah, thanks for having me, man. You got some cool stuff going on. Uh, I'm ready to get to work. Awesome, yeah, I guess you met Brandon. Yeah, so I, we already talked and I think you're gonna tackle the wiring harness you got laid out on the table. I've already started taking the door apart and Mark, I think there's a whole bunch of stuff under the hood for you to do. Yeah, I got my hands full over there. It looks like you guys have your hands full too, so I'll let you get at it. Yeah, I need to get some parts. All right, so we've got this harness laid on the table. I like to do this every time. We kind of go through it, trim it up, make sure that we've got everything kind of run where we need it so that when we go to install the harness, it makes for a lot cleaner, easier installation. Oh, yeah. That's in pretty good shape. All right, now that I'm done busting my knuckles, getting that old door torn apart, we're going to be working on the new parts. First thing we're going to put in is going to be the window lift channel. And what you're going to need is this glass setting tape. It's pretty easy to do. All you do is cut it to length. Try not to break the window. Give it a little push. Just kind of shake it on. Just give it a tap with the hammer. All right, before we put that window in the door, I'm gonna actually install the door frame. Oh yeah, very nice. All right, moving on to the vent window. All right, if the sun and the moon align, this should drop right in. Oh yeah. We've eclipsed that part of the assembly and can move on to the latch and linkage. Don't scratch it. As with most of our other restoration components, we got all this stuff from Dennis Carpenter. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I'm calling the guts of that door done. It's getting there. Up next, Ben gets the wiring in place and the taillight sparked. We'll do there. Got him. That should be it. Hold on. All right. Is that good right there? Yep. So, hey guys, we've got the fuse panel mounted, as you can see. We've got the wires pulled to the front, and we've got them run through the firewall and pulled to the back. So now we're trying to figure out where everything's going here behind the dash. I know it still looks a little rough, but once we test the circuits, get everything pulled where we want, then we can clean it up at that point. But you know, we've got things such as vintage air, we've got aftermarket gauges, aftermarket steering column, transmission controller, and engine controller that all have to be wired up from this chassis harness. So, we're getting there, we're pulled wires, and we're gonna get them terminated, and hopefully we'll get this thing started soon. So one of the main causes of wiring frustrations is your grounds. One thing that we make sure to do, as you can see here, is if there is any paint, rust, debris, etc., make sure it's clean. You can see here it's bare metal. We clean it and then we put dielectric grease on it before we land that ground. So we finished pulling our wires from the fuse block back here to the rear of the frame. And now we're going to uh, terminate some wires, put some plugs on, and get this rear body harness buttoned up. See if our tail lights work.
This main body harness that we got from Summit Racing is made specifically for 66 to 77 Broncos, and all it requires are the ends to be terminated once you have trimmed them to length. A little dielectric grease in the connectors to keep the moisture out, and we can get the taillight bucket installed. All right, so we've buttoned the rear wiring up. Let's see if it works. Awesome, great. So the wiring's pretty well finished. There's a few things left undone under the dash. When the guys get the dash finished, they'll be able to plug everything up, get it back in there, and it should be good to go. Up next, I tackle our cooling and AC systems. Well, I've been working up front here trying to figure out what we're gonna do with all of our plumbing, specifically for the AC system. Uh, a big part of the AC system, though, is the heat system as well. Uh, which is also part of the cooling system. So I'm trying to figure out the radiator and the condenser. And what we did was we got this radiator. It's a replacement for a 97 T-Bird, uh, as well as the fan, uh, just because it has that nice OEM look and they're easy to mount with these tabs here. Uh, so I think I've got figured out how I'm gonna mount this. We'll get this in and then we can connect the rest of the plumbing. It's tight. Well, one of the things when it comes to a job like this that you have to have are the radiator hoses, and in our case, a coolant expansion tank. Uh, it's a late model engine, so it's a Coyote, and it has to have an expansion tank rather than an overflow tank, and you have to have special types of connections for the radiator hoses, and this is what we've got right here. All of the stuff that you see here on this cart we got from rockauto.com. Reason being is because this is all OEM style Coyote stuff for like late model F-150 and late model Mustangs. Uh, the expansion tank, this one right here, we got for uh, Crown Vic. So it's very similar as well. And this is for a late model Mustang, this expansion tank here. This is probably the one we're gonna go with uh, because it's got the 5 8 nipple here on the bottom for the expansion hose. And then it has the, the two steam hoses that go in here. One goes to the radiator and then one goes to the engine. So we'll probably end up having to use this one. Uh, this is really gonna help with our Bronco to keep it kind of OEM looking under the hood, which is kind of what we're going for. Uh, but also us being able to order all of this stuff from Rock Auto makes it really simple because we can just go through the catalog, order a bunch of stuff. It's relatively inexpensive. And then we can just pick and choose what we need. Another thing are the heater hoses. This is OEM style Mustang or F-150 heater hoses. It's got the connectors on here that we're not gonna use on the firewall side, but we will need these for the engine side. So we kind of need stuff like this. As a matter of fact, I've got a couple of the heater hoses already installed on the engine. And for the radiator hoses, I've already got these two trimmed up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these installed and then fine tune those heater hoses. Looks good. We're just using those OE style heater hoses and trimming them to fit. This one has to be cut right here. One of these heater hoses is three quarter inch diameter, so we need to install a three quarter inch to five eighths inch reducer coupler so we can connect to the fitting on our bulkhead. Well, that pretty much does it for all of the components on our AC system, except for the hoses, of course. Now, you've probably heard lots of terms related to AC systems like compressor, condenser, evaporator, and you may not know what those components are, what they do, or even where they're located. So, we put together something fun to show you how it all works. It all starts with the compressor, which is driven by the belt and draws in the refrigerant through the suction line. It then compresses that refrigerant and sends it into the discharge line, which dumps into the inlet of the condenser. The condenser works like a radiator and is the part that mounts in front of your actual radiator. Its job is to condense that hot, high-pressure gas into a liquid. 
It does this by cooling the refrigerant down via ambient air passing over the fins and tubes. From the condenser, this liquid refrigerant collects in the dryer, which also acts as a filter for the system. From there, the refrigerant travels through the liquid line to the expansion valve. This valve meters the amount of refrigerant that is released into the evaporator core. This is where the magic happens. As the refrigerant begins to expand from a liquid to a gas, it rapidly cools. The blower motor in the evaporator case pushes air across the tubes and fins of the evaporator and is cooled as a result. At this point, the cooled air is blown through your vents and into your interior. Well, now you're up to speed on AC systems and how they work. Let's get back to getting this thing all wrapped up. All that's left is gonna be a little bit of plumbing. I went ahead and got all of the components reinstalled and I made a couple of the lines already. I made the number eight discharge hose that comes out of the compressor, flows into the condenser here, got that installed and tight, as well as the number six hose that comes out of the condenser and goes into the dryer. Now it's time to make the liquid line. You'll notice there's a lot of plumbing under the hood of this truck and we're not done yet. So keeping all of these hoses routed neatly is key. I'm indexing the hose with a marker so I can crimp the end, which is actually pretty satisfying. Well, this is the last hose, and this is actually the final hose that the refrigerant travels through as it goes back into the compressor to be cycled again and to cool the vehicle. Now that does it for the AC, except for one thing, and that's the controls. Up next, we're getting started on our dash. Man, that looks good in there. A common problem with early Broncos is if you run a full cage like we're doing, even if you put that bar out as far as you can here against the dash, it interferes with the glove box door and you can't open it all the way. There are several ways to fix this, but in order to maintain the build quality that we want on ours, I think what I want to do is just cut out the glove box door and move it down. We could eliminate either the ashtray or the speaker grate here, but since we're going with an aftermarket stereo and some bigger speakers, we're not going to need the speaker grate anyway. So what I'm going to do is cut that out, move everything down, patch the hole. I'm going to go ahead and use my patch I cut here to mark how much material to remove. The masking tape will be my guide and the cutoff wheel my tool of choice. It's a little warm. Fits. I can fill that in with some TIG and be good as new. The TIG welder is perfect for this job because it's easier to control the heat and the amount of filler. And since this dash is not a structural component, light penetration is all we need. All right, well, that's gonna go just like that. And once we get it in the truck with the roll bar in there, we didn't tell you, you'd never know that we moved the glove box. But, well, you'll know, but that'll be our little secret. Well, Brandon did a fine job getting our dash all painted up, as you can see, and you can't even tell that we moved the glove box over and eliminated uh, that speaker vent there, which is what we were going for anyway. Now, as far as things that we're gonna be retaining off of our original dash, not much. The glove box door, the ashtray, which we've got set aside because we need to get those cleaned up and painted as well, but then also our defrost duct here, which I'm gonna install first. Well, the next thing is gonna be our instrument cluster. We went to Classic Instruments for one of their six pack kits, 466 to 77 Bronco. What's great about this is unlike the factory cluster, this actually has the tack built in. That's why they call it a six pack because it's got the speedo, tack, oil pressure, fuel, battery, and temp. Of course, the odometer as well. And we took ours a step further, which they'll do this for you too and we got the logo installed there onto the face, which we think is a really nice touch. Cost you a little more, but it's totally worth it. Uh, this thing is completely digital, and it even has a little connector in the back, and you can get that wired into your harness, which Ben has already done on ours. Uh, so this thing just needs to bolt right in, and it just stalls in the factory location. 
My favorite thing about this is that it looks factory, so at a glance, you don't even realize that it's aftermarket. Well, that looks awesome, as I knew it would, but uh, the next big thing that we're gonna be installing in our dash is gonna be something we don't do that often, and that is a radio. We went to Retro Sound for one of their Motor 4 radios. This is kind of their top of the line model. It does a little bit of everything. Uh, it's compatible with Sirius XM. It's got the little jack here, so you can hook that up if that's what you like to listen to. Or if you want to hook something up through the USB, you can hook it up there. Um, it also has auxiliary cables. It has an external mic, so if you want to talk on the phone through the radio like you would a modern vehicle. It's got that feature. Um, it's got six preamp outs, so you can hook it up to an amp, which we're going to be doing later on on our Bronco. Uh, and then, of course, it's got your regular radio features like an AM FM. So if you want to just listen to the regular radio, you can do that as well. I'm just going to get this thing installed, and pretty soon we'll be getting that dash in the truck. We're installing this in the factory location, and coincidentally, this radio looks remarkably similar to an original Ford radio. Now for all the OE stuff, we went to Dennis Carpenter yet again. Of course, this is just a small assortment of what we're gonna be installing on the dash here. We've got the dash control lights here, bezels, ignition lock cylinder, all the knobs and everything to make this dash look brand new. Ooh. All right. Man, that looks good in there. Yeah, the dash is like half the interior. It, so. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> this being installed, and we couldn't install the dash without, Ben, you putting in the wiring harness, which is like the biggest job on this truck. So, thank you. Yeah, no, no problem. I appreciate you having me out here. Um, that dash looks killer. That white against that green, this is gonna, yeah. this is turning out awesome. If you can't get enough of our Bronco, go to PowerNationTV.com and check out our Beach Cruiser Bronco project page. We have current build status, before and after pics, links to parts used, and all the episodes right there on one page. Today on Music City Trucks. We're getting the Beach Cruiser Bronco ready to roll with some work on the fuel system and engine bay. Big moment. Then a little install of some sheet metal. And a nifty finish job on the spare tire carrier. Which is all going to lead us to a reveal of what this baby is going to look like when it finally rolls out of our shop. Oh yeah. Hey everybody, welcome to Music City Trucks. As you can see, we're still working on our early Bronco project here. Now I'm not sure what heaven looks like, but I guarantee you there's at least one of these there. I uh, absolutely love these things. My first vehicle was an early Bronco, so this is kind of a passion project for me. And we're kind of over the hump with a lot of the big items. Engine, transmission, transfer case are all in it. Things painted up. Uh, but we're getting down to the minutia of all the really small things, the tedious jobs. Uh, today we're going to be tackling things like the fuel system. We're going to plumb the power steering and hydro boost systems. We've got to plumb the intercooler. We actually have to mount that up here. It's going to fit in really tight behind the grill. And then before the show is over today, we want to get all of the sheet metal and shiny stuff on this thing so we can make it look like the way it's going to look when it's all done so that's very exciting but first things first that fuel system now when we started this project we wanted to take the classic design and styling of the early bronco and couple it with modern components that are available in the aftermarket today and this fuel system is no different now if you remember we went to dennis carpenter for a lot of stuff they gave us all of the sheet metal to get the body assembled as well as a bunch of restoration components like door handles and mirrors and all the shiny stuff for the dash uh, and they also gave us some components for our fuel system here. Let's start with the tank. This is an OE style main fuel tank for an early Bronco. Not only this would be silver, but we did get it powder coated black uh, for no other reason other than we just wanted it to kind of disappear under the truck. And then everything else to get that installed like the filler neck and the strap. Well, moving on from there, if you remember, we went 
to Classic Instruments for that really nice new gauge cluster that they did for us. And we mentioned then that they included all of the senders to communicate with that cluster properly. And the fuel level sender is one of those. So we need to get this thing installed. And then the rest of the fuel system we got from Holly, the main piece is gonna be this in-tank retrofit fuel pump kit. It's called a retrofit kit because it's made to install in your original fuel tank, which is done by drilling a hole in the top of the tank and then dropping in and tightening the hat. Brandon gets the filter regulator in and then it's time to get the tank strapped in. Oh, that looks good. Oh, yeah. All's well, it ends well. We're moving on to the plumbing of the fuel system, which starts with the filter regulator, and of course, we're using AN braided line. One of the systems we really haven't touched on much is our braking system, specifically the hard brake lines. And that's because a while back, we made all of our lines out of copper nickel. Now this is what we use on most of the projects here in the shop. This is really great for making brake lines because it's easy to bend and it's easy to flare. But if you're doing something like the Bronco where it's a high-end build or a restoration or something like that, you wanna use stainless brake lines. So what we did was all of the hard lines that we made, we sent those out to Classic Tube and they duplicated them with stainless steel. Uh, the reason why we did that is because stainless steel tubing is very difficult to bend and to bend nicely, and it's even more difficult to flare properly. So they did all the hard work for us, took all the guesswork out of it. Uh, they actually specialize in making custom brake lines, stainless steel brake lines for your daily driver, or your project car, or a concourse restoration. Now all you need to do is just get these things installed. Oh, that looks nice. So what we're using on this is DEI Fire Sleeve. We got a couple different sizes here. Uh, this resists heat, direct heat up to 500 degrees and intermittent heat up to 2000 degrees. So this is ideal for what we're using it for here on our brake lines and fuel lines that run real close to the header here. Uh, you can use them on this type of line or like transmission cooler lines or anything like that that needs to be protected from the heat. This is that fancy tape that sticks to itself. I'll hold this in place. All right, it's all done. We just need to strap this up right here and that'll be good to go. You put a clamp? Yep. Yeah, that looks good. Sweet. We're done under here pretty much? Yeah, let's do engine some, stuff yeah. and <laughs> more top work. Uh, we got quite the list of things that need to be done. Yeah. Up next, we plumb our heat exchanger, intercooler system, and a few other little goodies. One of the problems we've been needing to solve under the hood here that I've been kind of avoiding is our throttle body situation. Now, the way that this throttle body comes on this crate engine, it's bolted on just like this. The major problem with that for us is because this is drive by wire, it's got this motor here that actuates the, the throttle plate and our hood would actually contact that. So this thing's got to at least get clocked. But if you try to clock it, it hits the radiator hose. And even if we could do that, there's really not enough room for an elbow to get in here because the fan's so close. Everything's really tight under this hood, as you can see. Uh, so the solution would be to move the throttle body out here and clock this where the connector faces down uh, the advantage to that also is that gives us a straight shot to our air intake and we want as straight and long of a shot as possible between the mass air meter and the throttle body. Uh, so we don't really uh, mess with the tune too much. Um, so this will actually allow us to do that. Well, since Mark's out of the way, I'm going to be working on the front of the truck and that's going to be installing this heat exchanger. Now, one important thing is you want to make sure it gets the coldest air possible, which means in front of the radiator, in front of the condenser, if you got a trans cooler or an oil cooler in front of that. So we're going to be mounting it on the front side of the core support, somewhere like that. And then I made these little tabs, just bent out of sheet metal. I'll 
mark our holes. Oh, right on that fresh paint. Mm -hmm. Before I go drilling a hole through this core support, I'm gonna just take a piece of metal that I wrapped in tape, stick it behind there so I don't blow a hole through the radiator first time around. I didn't really spend a lot of time engineering the brackets, but I still want to make this install look nice. Oh. Oh yeah, look at that. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That'll do, pig. Oh yeah, that's that's quality work right there. Next thing to install is this pump. All right, one of the last components of this system is gonna be this reservoir. I already drilled a hole. It's pretty simple, just one bolt. I think it's gonna work. Mm. Mm hmm Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That ain't too bad, man. That looks good. Yeah. Check like this it? out. Yeah, that looks great. I don't know about the tape on there, but ah, it's for cooling. <laughs> well, let me get this on here and we'll get a air cleaner on it. And... All right. Damn, that looks good. Oh, like it was made for it. This is a good solution for our clearance problem. And with the throttle body pointed in this direction, it'll give us a nice straight shot for our air intake. Well, this definitely solves a huge problem we had with that throttle body. Let's get this filter and MAF housing in here. Really like the way that looks. Definitely have to come back with some clamps and actually may even come in here and, and paint this tube black just to make it all match. What do you think? Dude, I like it. I like it. Needs a little tweaking. I think we need to start throwing some sheet metal on this thing though. And that's a little premature, just being that, you know, we've got a lot still. I know, but you know, it doesn't hurt to Start making this thing look like a truck. I'm okay with that. I definitely want to see what it looks like. Let's grab some fenders. All right, let's do it. Big moment. Up next, we put a face to the name of Beach Cruiser Bronco. All right, so I'm getting a little antsy, a little anxious to see this thing look like a real Bronco. So for now, we're gonna be done with mechanical work and I wanna start throwing some sheet metal on this thing. Yep, of course, we've got all the painted sheet metal that's been waiting to be installed and we're adding all of the shiny stuff here that we got from Dennis Carpenter. Nice chrome bumper, all the lighting and trim. It's gonna go in the grill. And of course, fender emblems that declare that this is a Bronco in case there was any doubt. <laughs> so what are we gonna do first? I say fenders. All right, we need to clips. get some clips. Yeah. These are OE style clips that we got from Dennis Carpenter, which came with stainless steel bolts. These prevent you from having to hold a nut on the back side of the panel just to get the fenders installed. This makes me nervous. Yeah, this is the, the delicate part of the process right here. I'll follow your lead. Clicks in like Legos. It's like this has been on here before. Yeah. Oh man, we're getting good at this. I'd rather not. Big moment. Let's see, all right. Somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. You gonna push on it? Yeah, it needs a little, a little persuasion. With the grill bolted in, we can go ahead and start dressing it up with all new everything. Buckets, lights, hardware, and bezels. Dead blow. Did look. Yeah. Some stuff takes finesse, and others take some straight up brute force. 
Dude. That looks good. Dude. 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 Another big moment. Yeah. Ready? Uh. Hey, Scott. <laughs> Can you give us a hand? <laughs> The beauty shot. All right, you ready? All right, here we go. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> A couple more dudes. Dude. Dude. For our Broncos interior, we went with TMI products. We picked up their pro low back front bucket seats and replacement door panels and went with a two-tone design using a premium distressed brown vinyl and light tan suede center inserts with white contrast stitching to complement the beach theme of the build. We love that all TMI interiors are handcrafted, which gives us a perfect fit and finish. And of course, you'll see the rest of what we got from TMI during our final install, which is happening soon. Next, the finishing touches, and we'll finally see how she looks. How are we looking? Slow on the roll cage. Well, we moved on to the rear of our Bronco here. We're trying to get this thing looking like a Bronco. Uh, I went ahead and did some modifications to the frame here. I actually had to notch it out a little bit because we're gonna install this spare tire carrier that we got from James Duff. The reason I had to modify the frame is because this thing actually sits inside between the frame rails and hides behind the bumper. It's pretty cool. Let me show you how this thing works. The bumper slides into the bracket and then the bumper and bracket both get bolted to the horns of the frame. Then the carrier bolts to the bracket. and a couple of bump stops and a latch, and we have ourselves a spare tire carrier. It just needs a spare tire. All right, gotta put the internals of the tailgate in. And I just went ahead and sat and cleared these. I like them metal, the metal look. I don't really like when these are painted. Oh, yeah, that works. Okay. Just double check and put the rod on there. Slide it in. All right, I'm just gonna assemble the latch here. We have to adjust these once we get the tailgate on. Cables instead of the actual metal tailgate supports. I don't look too bad. Slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> Moment of truth. Yep. <laughs> That's it. It latched. Sweet. Grab the top. Let's do it. How are we looking? Slow on the roll cage. Still good? Yep. And, and the down. Down? Slow. Watch that corner on that door. Yeah, we're good. Nicely done. The contrast. That's a huge color change right there. Oh. That's nice. Well, we're at the point on our Bronco now where we're not completely finished with it yet, but it's pretty complete and we can get it pushed off to the side and work on something else. And we'll come back and finish all the little stuff later on. And if you're in our shoes and you're building something really high end, or if you've bought 
a nice high-end ride, say something that you bring out of the garage once or twice a month to take out for a cruise or to a car show, you wanna keep it protected when it's parked in your garage. And we went to the Car Cover Kings Covercraft. They have a legacy of building premium outdoor and indoor car covers. Yeah, and this one in particular is called their Form Fit. It's their most luxurious indoor car cover. These car covers are tailored to your vehicle. They have elastic front and rear hems, and the fabric follows the vehicle's contours. It's made of polyester knit with a spandex added to the yarns. It includes non-scratch grommets, and is made of a specially engineered fabric for all climates. The inside is 100% cotton sheared to a fleece finish. There's a four-year warranty, and they're available in six colors. And the super soft fabric pampers the paint, the chrome, anything the fabric touches. Plus, the highly breathable fabric prevents vapor and heat from becoming trapped underneath the cover. Finally, it's machine washable. The best car cover is a clean cover. And this cover is easy to maintain in most front load washer dryers. And they'll even customize yours with your logo of choice like they did ours. Yeah, well, now that I feel comfortable that this thing's protected from any debris around the shop or dents or dings that someone might get in it. Yeah, people um, messing with it, like the producer or videographer. Yeah, I think it's time for a vacation, get our head straight yeah. so we can finish this build. Yeah, it's like the last 10% takes 90% of the time. Well, that's what they say anyway. I think that's a little exaggerated, but it feels that way anyway. It definitely feels like that. So, so I think this is a good time for us to take a break, step away for a week, and uh, I think I'm gonna go camping. Camping, that sounds pretty good actually. I might do that as well. If you can't get enough of our Bronco, go to PowerNationTV.com and check out our Beach Cruiser Bronco project page. We have current build status, before and after pics, links to parts used, and all the episodes right there on one page. Today on Music City Trucks, we finish up our Seafoam Beach Cruiser Bronco with a little help from our friends. We install the dash, paint some remaining pieces, and put in the windshield. Plus, we finish the drive shafts, Jimmy builds us an exhaust, and finally, that beautiful interior. And at the end of it all, we've got ourselves a Bronco. And she is something to behold. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Brandon Burke. And I'm Mark Christ. And we're getting back on our 1974 Ford Bronco project. Now this has been a really huge build and we're really close with it, but we've got it covered up and we had it on the back burner for a while. It's time to break it out and finally get the finishing touches done on it. Now there's a laundry list of things still left to do. So we brought in the guys from Carcass, Jeremy and Jimmy. Thanks for coming over and helping us with this last push. You know, not a problem. We know you guys have been working on this for a while and you got some stuff to get done on it and we're here to help. All right, well, let's get it uncovered. Kind of see what we've got up against us Ooh. here. And it's still pretty. Just the way we left her. <laughs> it's like, what do we say, 90% done? It's like 90% done. It looks really close though. Yeah, it's great. Like I said, there's a laundry list of things to do. Couple things underneath the hood, obviously the interior, some things underneath. So I think we should just divide up and conquer. Yeah, you mentioned under hood. I've got a bunch of things under the hood that I kind of did last time, but I didn't finish up. Got a bunch of hose clamps to put on, some wiring, and some other things I need to do. So I'm going to do that. Yeah, and a project like this, you know, there's always pieces you forget to paint. So I'm going to round up all the pieces and put some color on it. I think that's what I'll do. Yeah, and we had kind of talked a little bit, you guys have some steering and some plumbing stuff to do under the hood, so I can jump in there with you since we're up front. Okay. Yeah, and there's a little bit of random fabrication brackets and exhaust needs to be made. Yeah, so I can exhaust. Do that. So. Yeah, okay, cool. But before we dig in, since this is gonna be a mad thrash and we're gonna be working around the front here, just to save the panels, let's just pull the front clip back off for now. Yeah, it's, uh, a, it's pretty easy to pull it off, so. Yeah, let's just. Not risk chipping a fender or something. Sounds good. Yeah, that'd be bad. Let me get the hood fender. Off. Dropping the hood. That'd be Whoa, oh, we didn't have a body stand ready for this. Oh, that's all right, I'll take it. Let's just go ahead and go right over here. You good? Slow and steady, I think I said that before. 
up here, we're gonna start plumbing in the Hydro Boost. So we got a kit from Summit Racing and all this stuff basically goes together. So we get from here down to the pump, pump to the box, and then we'll put a reservoir in it too. All right, one more thing to add here on the power steering side of things is this reservoir, and then we can run the return lines and finish this thing up. All right, the plumbing's basically wrapped up. We'll just add a couple clamps here, move on to the next task. All right, so I got all the parts rounded up. These are all sanded and ready for primer, but I still need to drill some holes in this inner fender since we're gonna be bolting it in. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So while the guys are thrashing on getting things put on the truck, I'm gonna take my time in getting these last pieces buttoned up. Man, it's getting crowded in here. I'm just gonna mark the holes where the nut certs need to go. Get this thing in paint. After priming everything with finished sand, I'm just gonna throw a few coats of basin clear on them. With all the plumbing and wiring behind the dash complete, we can finally install it along with the rest of the switches. Hey, putting shiny stuff on is a good sign we're getting close. All right guys, so I've got a little template here. I'm gonna be making a plate to cover the hole right there where there was originally a fresh air box. So what I'm gonna do here is make this one similar to a plate I already made. This one kind of covers up the front of the engine bay here where the ECU lies. I'm gonna make this one similar, do some kind of bead roll design in here. And what I have to start with is just take my template, tape it to my sheet of aluminum, and then center punch where holes need to be. And then I'll trace it out, stomp it on the shear. We're getting ready to install the column now that we've got the dash all buttoned up. I mean, we've got some things that we still need to connect under here, but that's nothing that the dash needs to come out to do. Uh, one thing to keep in mind with these early Broncos is there's not an opening here for the column to go up into. It has to go through the dash, which is a bit of a pain, but um, once we've got the dash all dialed in the way we have it, I have no problem getting this column in. Hopefully my plan is pretty see-through. You know? <laughs> well, you're the glass guy. I'm not the glass guy, so. Wait, right. did you just make a joke? I, I just totally <laughs> missed that. <laughs> plan is pretty see-through. All right, you got it? Yeah. I don't know, I'm seeing a window of opportunity here to maybe help you out. Yeah. <laughs> Up next, we put the Bronco on the lift for the final time and get her all buttoned up. Nice. Installed. Thank you, sir. Well, our Bronco still looks a little rough and undone, but we've actually gotten a lot accomplished. The engine bay is pretty much done in the way it's going to look when it's all finished, uh, but that's not all we've accomplished. Yeah, we also got the dash assembled, steering, we've got all the doors finished, wipers are in it, and we got the windshield in it. And speaking of the windshield, we finally got our checklist here taped to it. Um, and we got several things knocked off, but there's still a lot left. And thankfully, we've got some help here. Guys, thanks for coming and helping with what you've done so far and for moving forward. Yeah, no problem. Uh, you know, got a little, little bits and tasks done here and there. So uh, that's just been fun for us, I think. All right, so we're gonna get the truck over to the lift because a lot of what's left on these lists here are underneath the truck. So we've got to get the truck moved, get it in the air and knock those things off. And before you know it, this thing's going to be done. Okay, well, I think I'll tackle the brakes and you talk. There's a little plumbing to do yet. So like the trains cooler and stuff, but yep. I'll probably start on the brake side of things. Okay. Well, the guys had all the brakes and stuff mocked up, but the calipers need to actually be built out. Mark said that's a stock style caliper. So I have to pull the calipers off, drop a bunch of stuff on the ground, and uh, put the pistons inside. So deep down inside here, let's get the big piston. 
So there's a stainless steel piston that goes in there and some O-rings, so I just gotta build this out, install everything back up, then I can run brake lines. Really not too much to do in the back here. They've got mostly everything done. Just installing a couple brackets and then hooking up some lines and stuff. So this is the easy part. Eventually, to get up top, bench bleed the master, get some brakes in this thing. All right, tighten everything down, put the clip on, and the site's done. Then over here on the truck, you know, Mark and Brandon have EBC brakes, so we'll slide those pads in. Slid into place. A bunch of love taps. Now, just gotta get the hoses on the top, hook them up to the hard line. Just putting some of the finishing touches on the wiring system here. Uh, this is the body harness that goes to the rear. Just gonna get it in this loom and I got a cool way to get it clamped down too. So what I'm using here to clamp the wiring harness to the frame are these little clamps right here. Um, they're actually magnetic and they're made by Mr. Gasket. Just need to loop them in, snap them down and adjust it as necessary and nice and easy and clean. Well, we're making some great headway on the underside of our Bronco here. We've got a lot of hands in here helping out, which is great. Uh, Jeremy did a, a really nice job getting all of our brake lines all finished up and attached. Uh, but I do want to put a couple of clamps on here just, just in case, uh, so that doesn't get snagged on anything or start to sag over the time. Uh, Brandon did a, uh, a nice job getting uh, our fuel lines clamped a while back with this style of clamp uh, that we got from Earl's. Uh, it's like a little clamshell here, it's billet aluminum, and I want to install one of those here on the back. Now you would think you want to just mount it here in the center just because it would be maybe the most aesthetically pleasing, but I think that might be a little distracting. So I want to move it over here to the side. I think it's a better spot anyway, because we've got a connection here and one over here. So this kind of splits the difference a little bit. Uh, so I just, I'm going to drill and tap into this brace here. This is just a brace for the back, like a truss uh, for the axle. So I don't have to worry about drilling into the actual axle housing by doing this. So it'd be really nice. We do want to protect the powder coating, so we're going to use some masking tape and then drill and tap the hole. I like it. Appreciate you guys coming. Down. And this is where we found room for the battery. Special delivery, drive shafts, plural. Probably be the easiest thing to put in this thing. Yeah, well, hey, don't speak too soon. Wow, I bet you. Here, I'll hold this end. I tell you, this is the nicest, cleanest, craziest engineered Bronco stuff I've seen in a long time. Well, I'll tell you, it's not been an easy task. Well, anything like this that's that special to do, it's not going to be conventional. Nothing's going to bolt on, but when you get done, you'll have something that no one else has. Yeah, that's true. Okay, that's it. Nice. Install. Thank you, sir. Up next, Jimmy builds us an exhaust and Jeremy joins him for the install. Just had a little tickle right through the machine. It wakes you up in the morning. Scary. So Jimmy, who's our master fabricator here, jumped on building the exhaust, which is a universal stainless kit from Flowmaster. All right, so the exhaust is pretty simple, but also complicated at the same time. Already I have a Y-pipe tacked up here. I have a V-band on it because I'm gonna make the exhaust in sections. 
we have to have the exhaust come between the frame rail and the body. It'll come through here, muffler somewhere in here, and then it'll exit in front of the rear tire. We have to have this connection here to get the exhaust in it. But the hard part is making the crossover from the driver's side header into this Y. That's gonna be a little more complicated, lots of cuts and bends. But for right now, I'm just gonna tack this V-band on here, make a 90, tack a V-band on it too. So you've seen us build exhaust systems on here before, but on a nice build like this, stainless is a must, and TIG welding it together provides us the nicest finish. Jimmy's a pro, so we trust him with anything fab related, and that includes the exhaust system on our Bronco. With our four-link suspension, the drivetrain, and narrow frame rails on this early Bronco, there's not a lot of room for an exhaust system that will support the power that our supercharged Coyote will make. But Jimmy's got a great plan in mind. like the bottom of the pan. Yeah, how much room is here? It's up to you, you just tell me how much room is here. All right, that's the final piece of the exhaust. Everything's hung now, so the only thing I have to do is just take everything out. I'm gonna take it down to my studio and weld this whole thing up. Yes, that's it. All right, we've got the exhaust all welded up now and it's ready to go in the truck. But before we do that, I'm gonna wrap a section of it with this DEI heat wrap because this section right here goes between the floor and the frame rail and we wanna keep the heat off the feet. That's nice. All right, let's do it. <laughs> heat off the feet. Yeah. You're a comedian. I don't have much to say, but when I do, it matters, right? <laughs> wow. get it installed. How nice it was of you to paint it black, Jimmy. There's actually quite a bit of room underneath here, at least put the exhaust in. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't too, too terrible. <sighs> Take a break for a minute. Oh, that's a tight squeeze. Let's see if I can. <sighs> okay. up on the floor. Oh, shoot. Here, get that again. I just tighten the V-band down, and that is an exhaust wrap. Woo! <laughs> yes! Up next, Tommy helps with the interior install, and then the big reveal. Thanks to Summit Racing, we got these wipers at the last minute and it kicked off the final install of the interior. Very nice, huh? Oh yeah. Now when I say everyone put their hands on this build, I mean everyone. And when it comes to fit and finish, Tommy is as good as you can get. And even though he's busy working on his own SEMA build, he took the time to come help us out. TMI products really knocked it out of the park with this interior kit that they gave us. The kit comes with everything, but we opted not to run the carpet because we bedlined the interior. But we are gonna be using those beautiful floor mats.
don't even want to touch it. Well, it's done. Done. <laughs> like for real. This has been what seemed to be an insurmountable build. I mean, just from the beginning, things didn't really go well. We pretty so we much threw everything away. And regrouped and look at the finished product. This is the biggest and most intense build that I've ever done. And I don't think we could have done it without all the help we've had. You know, Jimmy, Jeremy, Tommy, everybody before them. I mean, everybody who's put their hands on this has yep. made my dream come true of building a dream Bronco, which is a Coyote early Bronco. Right. And I know you've got your flavor in there too. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I took what you had already dreamed up and adopted it as my own, you know? So I feel like this is this is my baby too, you know? Yeah. And uh, like you said, all the help, Pat and Frankie came in, spent a 12 hour Saturday here with us. I mean, just the things that have happened behind the scenes to make something like this happen has been incredible. And, and I, I'm really proud to see it go to SEMA and, and I, I can't wait to see it on the floor there and get unveiled. Yeah, and I think that's one thing you kind of don't get all the time is how much overtime and, and all the work and blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah, I don't know how many cuts on my hands and arms that I've gotten from this truck. Yeah. But looking at it now, standing back, yeah, it's all worth it. All worth like, it. Yeah, there were times when I wanted to just not quit, but not make it as nice as it could be and as nice as yeah. it is now. And we didn't do that. We didn't let up. We stayed on the gas the whole time, and I mean, well, it shows. It shows. So. And I think me and you just putting our minds together, saying what we wanted to, to yep. show everybody what we could do. Yeah. I mean, sure. I, I think we hit it well, on the head. We've got a uh, transport coming. So that's, uh, I think we should get it out there and get it loaded up and head out to See Vegas. It. See you at SEMA. This truck was born in our shop and now it makes its maiden voyage. It's really amazing to see it drive out under its own power and as a complete vehicle. And knowing that it's headed to SEMA, it's a good feeling. We'll see you there. Today on Music City Trucks, it's all about fun with our 1974 Bronco, starting with SEMA in Las Vegas. It's an adrenaline rush to be able to thank our sponsors and show off the Bronco in public for the first time. Then we'll take our Beach Cruiser Bronco down to Kissimmee, Florida for Mecham's biggest auction of the year. So buckle up for our last ride before the Caribbean turquoise beauty becomes someone's new toy. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Brandon Burke. And I'm Mark Christ. And we are here in the Covercraft booth at SEMA 2021. Our Bronco's here we made it. at SEMA. Uh, I drove in here under its own power, which was very exciting. Uh, it's all finished up and it's covered up here. And here shortly, we're going to be uncovering it, unveiling it to everyone here at SEMA and the whole world. It's going to be awesome. Welcome to SEMA 21. Covercraft is the official car cover and seat cover sponsor of Power Nation. And uh, we're happy to have them here to unveil this beautiful truck. So uh, without further ado, I want to introduce uh, Brandon and Mark, and they're gonna talk about the truck and show it to you. When we came up with this project, you know, we were like, we wanna build an early Bronco, something that me and Mark would be proud of. And we just had a simple plan, we were like, do an engine swap, chassis swap, nice wheels and tires. And then Seafoam came in and they were like, hey, we want to sponsor this. And so the idea started growing and growing. Next thing you know, we got a whole bunch of new sheet metal. 
new chassis, axles, and it grew into a monster that I don't think we could have even thought about when we started it. And then that's when we were like, we need a bunch of help. So everyone at Power Nation helped. Chris Ryan and his crew helped paint the truck. Chad with Carliner. I mean, we can't thank all of you guys enough for putting your hands on this truck. And, and at the end, it's something that me and Mark are really proud of. When Seafoam came on board, they said, we want this thing to be sold and the proceeds go to Warrior's Heart Foundation, which is a, a nonprofit organization that helps um, veterans, active duty, and first responders who suffer from PTSD or addiction. Um, and the money, all of the money that gets donated to this charity goes directly to helping these people, which is absolutely amazing. There's not a lot of fat on this organization. I mean, it's very focused on helping veterans. This truck's gonna be, be sold at Mecham. And um, actually, we've got John Kramen here with Mecham Auctions, and uh, he's gonna talk about that a little bit. I was able to see this build maybe about halfway through the build process. And since that time, it's been painted, the interior's gone in, the engine has been installed. So a lot of the really high quality handiwork is not gonna be apparent. Make no mistake, this is not a throw it together budget build. This is a high quality build that is loaded with state of the art components and a tremendous amount of passion. And on behalf of all of us at Mecham Auctions, we're so glad to be a part of the sale of this. That being said, let's, let's go ahead and take the cover off. Yeah, so everyone can see it, and then we'll talk about some of the details. Up next, it's time to pull back the cover and unveil our 74 Bronco project that was built from the ground up. Welcome back to Music City Trucks. We're about to unveil this project that has consumed our lives for over six months. Woo! We're extremely proud of how this project turned out. I really love how we managed to keep the factory look of this Bronco. If you didn't see the lift and the wheels and tires, you might think it's a, a full restoration, but we actually built this truck from the ground up from parts. Basically everything you see that's sheet metal or shiny on this truck um, all came from Dennis Carpenter. Uh, they they re-stamp all of these components and they fit Really amazing. Uh, we used car aligner, uh, spot welder to assemble it. And then the paint job, we chose uh, Caribbean turquoise, actually a color that, that Brandon chose. Um, he had painted an early Bronco that color before and said, we've got to make it this color. So, so that's what we went with. Chris Ryan is here with Dolph and Danny. They came in and thrashed on this thing for a week. Uh, we had it in, in, a, in epoxy on Monday, and on Friday it was cleared. So, special thanks to you guys again. It just turned out so much better than we even imagined. So, we decided to go with a Coyote, and then uh, Edelbrock got involved, and they said, well, we don't have a naturally aspirated Coyote, but we do have a 785 horsepower supercharged Coyote, if you'd like to have that. So that's what we went with. That made the build a little more difficult, as you can imagine. This has been a labor of love. We're, we're very proud of it. And uh, hopefully, you know, when it crosses the block, it'll, it'll blow us away with the, with the number that it brings. I think you've raised, you've reset the bar for what you guys do. But that having said, this is gonna be big money. This is going to be a lot of money for the charity. So not only, not only is it a big deal for you guys to be able to accomplish something and execute it so well, but when there's veterans involved with it, getting the proceeds from the sale of it, that's, that's the icing on the cake. It is going to be exciting, and it is going to be a lot of fun. All those late nights, long hours, all that frustration, it's all going to pay off yeah. when it hits the auction sure. block. Yep. History repeats itself. All right, well, there you have it. Broncos at SEMA. We unveiled it, and it feels really good to have uh, 
all the eyes on it and see the hard work that we've been putting in, all the late nights, uh, it, it's paid off. Yeah, it's nice now that it's done, we can take a step back and take it in like everybody else is and it's, it's just rewarding and it's just nice to take a, a breath. Yeah, this is the first breath of fresh air that we've it had is. in months. Yep. And uh, I think now that the truck's unveiled, say we walk around and talk to people. And yeah, and then before you know it, see this thing crossing the block at Mecham. Putting the hammer down on it. All right, let's go check the show out. Oh yeah. Up next, we take our Bronco to Mecham for the big moment. Yeah, we do. Well, we're back and our Seafoam Bronco is back from SEMA. And I gotta say, there's no better way to unveil your project vehicle to the world than on the floor at SEMA. Yeah, it was an amazing feeling. Everyone loved the truck, but now we're gonna be switching gears and loading this thing up to go to Mika. But before we load it up, we just got our 2021 Ford Bronco in and I love the styling cues, the grill, the lights, the fenders. I think they knocked it out of the park and with all the amenities with the new car, I mean, yeah. they just knocked it out of the park. No, no doubt. I mean, when you look at this Bronco next to the original, which we could not do, right? You can tell that they took that into consideration when they designed this, as I hope that they would, especially after a 25 year hiatus. Now, we are gonna be modifying this Bronco, you know, maybe do a couple little things to make it look a little less stock, uh, because we're actually gonna be giving this thing away to one of you folks at home, so you're gonna get a chance to win that here pretty soon. Yeah, but before we put a wrench on this truck, let's load this one up for Mecham. Well, we made it here to Kissimmee, Florida for Mecham Auctions. Our Seafoam Broncos here safely as well. It looks amazing. Uh, very excited to have it here. It's gonna cross the block tomorrow, which I have to admit, does make me just a tad bit nervous. I have a bunch of butterflies in my stomach, but since it's sitting here, safe, waiting to go to the block, we have a few minutes. We're gonna go look around and see what else is here. Yeah, let's check this place out. Beacom is the world's largest collector car auction, and every event brings in a lot of great vehicles. And this is exciting for us because the auction in Kissimmee every year is their largest. This year, bringing in over 3,500 cars and trucks. Yeah. Super old school with the triple, triple bar, roll bar, roll bar, chromed out, pinstriping under the clear, brown. Yes. I mean, I like perfection. that. I like that. I grew up on these. See, that's just this an old truck is, to me. <laughs> this is perfection. Walking around the auction, you usually see a few similar vehicles, but they're always built with a unique taste and style. First of its kind fleet side truck set the trend for all the other manufacturers to go with, step away from the step side beds and go to a full streamlined bedside and cool truck. I don't care what you say, it's tough to beat a nice clean dent side. Check out this time capsule Yoda. Thornbirds it does have. So this Blazer's got an LS swap, uh, houndstooth interior, kind of an OE look. Really nice black paint, which is always hard, hard to pull off. And um, it's got some modern wheels. I don't know if I would have picked those wheels, but I'm okay with it. It's, it's, on the, it's on the border for me, but it, I'm okay with it. It doesn't kill it, but I pro personally, I would have gone with a different wheel, but that's easy enough to change. Overall execution, beautiful truck. Um, be anxious to see what that thing brings. If y'all don't know, I like camping. And this Casa Grande es muy bueno. This Bronco is a 74 like ours, 80 to 90. Very clean. This is a restoration, you know. Ours has got a lot more trinkets on it than this, but this is just as cool. I like the color. This is probably yep. one of my favorite colors on this, besides 
Caribbean Turquoise. Speaking of Caribbean Turquoise, keeping our Bronco clean are the guys from Sonax USA. The Bronco, the paint on it is unlike anything that we've ever seen before. It is extremely hard. Uh, we have uh, we five-step sanded it. Uh, as you guys know, we, it, it took, I think we got about 250 hours in, in man hours in it. And um, it wasn't easy, but I think it came out amazing. You guys have been great to work with. Uh, you, you guys called us to say, hey, can you come in and help us with, with the shine of the paint? And the thing looks amazing, and we're just really excited to be a part of it. I think this is what really makes Sonax really rise to the top. Uh, as I mentioned, the paint is incredibly hard, uh, very difficult to work with. Uh, something in our arsenal, we just kept working with different products and we found the exact, uh, exact combination to make it look like it looks. You know, we're not just truck guys. We love everything automotive. And to cap off our first day here, a quick look at some of the more prominent vehicles that will be crossing the block here in Kissimmee, including the iconic Ferrari F40 and the one-of-a-kind Hirohata Merc, which set the trend for custom cars when it was built by Barris in 1952. Up next, it's auction time, and the excitement hits the roof. Let's do this. You guys ready for it? Oh I can't wait to see this thing. Oh my goodness. Wow. Hey, Mark, guess who I brought? Oh, look who it is. This is like, I mean, when I saw it at the, when I saw it at the shop, we had all these parts just sitting on stands, sitting on shelves. I mean, you saw the body, it was painted, but to see this completely put together, it's totally amazing. I mean, the work you guys did is, this is unbelievable. Thank I, you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so excited to see it. Brian? Yeah, it's just my impression when I, so I'm familiar with it. I've never seen it, but the scale of it is bigger than, you know, what I was seeing on TV, so it's, it's pretty awesome. Thank you. As a company, our, our mission, a big part of our mission is to provide second chances to restore hope. Um, we, and that extends to families, that extend, extends to communities. You know, everything about how this came together and, and to be here today, um, to see the outcome, you know, uh, and to be able to, to um, give those dollars to an organization like Warrior's Heart, where they're, that's what they do. They're, they're restoring hope to people and families and communities. So, like, it's a perfect, the whole idea is a perfect fit for our purpose. And um, it's, a, it's a real honor to be here, and I'm, I'm uh, really pleased. I mean, it's just, it's a lot of fun anticipating and, and uh, being around this. So we stuffed a monster under the hood. Wow. That is unbelievable. Now what do we, what was the, the horsepower on this? 786, I believe. Don't quote me on that. 785, 786, something it's like close that. It's close to that. What's this material here? This right here, it's aluminum. Okay. So it was part of an intake for like turbo setup. And we cut it up and TIG welded it and because the throttle body was gonna hit the radiator. And the hood. And the hood. Yeah. So we had to kick it sideways. And it, in the throttle body, the mass airflow wants a nice straight shot from the air cleaner to the throttle body. So that was our, our best solution. I watched some of the episode and, and talked about, you know, the welding. Yeah, the, the spot welding. The spot welding We didn't want to take away from the Bronco. Like, right. if you make it too clean and too modern, then it's like loses character. It's too custom, you know. Like right. a Bronco is supposed to have exposed welds and and screws for the hard, you know, all the hardware exposed. I think that gives it its character. Obviously, I mentioned all the powder coated components. Yep. You know, we got a powder coated. The, we started with the aftermarket chassis, had that powder coated. You know, all these suspension components from James Duff, all that stuff powder coated. You know, we got Curry crate axles, all those are brand new and powder coated. Okay, so you ready for this thing to cross the block? Yeah, let's do it. It's getting close. It's literally right around the corner from going over to the block, and you get the butterflies now. And the home of Almeida. You know, a little bit 
nervous, the heart's racing. I, you know, it's, it's a huge moment for Warriors Fire. It, you know, this is this is the this is the ending. You know, I mean, it, it's the beginning, though, of what you guys have done, the heart that you guys have put into this, and for some somebody that's going to own this, you know, the the meaning behind it of how many people they're going to help. I mean, the lives they're going to save. There's Alex, and here is L128.1, a 1974 Ford Bronco. This vehicle has been donated by the seller with proceeds to benefit Warriors Heart Foundation. Built by Music City Truck, sheet metal from Dennis Carpenter, throttled down custom chassis, suspension by James Duff, crate curry axles. It features a 6R80 transmission, TMI interior, vintage air, and it's offered today with the proceeds to benefit the charity at no reserve. Sir, sir, anybody want to give on this one here? Anybody? 100,000, all of the little pieces, the little pieces that went into this all stack up. Like, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, right? So this is the true moment where we're gonna find out exactly how much it is. They're asking for 80 right now, 85, 90, 95. It's going up, we broke 100. All right, 105. There it goes. This is where it's gonna really get exciting here, right? So, so you've got some people that are players, you got some people that are players. What's that? You got people that are players at the 100 to 110,000 range. They fall off, and then other guys start picking it up. You know what I mean? And that's where that's where things start really get exciting. Yeah. Ask what we thought. Tell you in five minutes, two minutes. Yeah. Yeah. See, now it's going to start going up again. See how it stalled? Stalled at 130. Jumps up a little bit. So. You just hope it keeps getting another run, you know? I mean, honestly, at that number, the number of people that that's gonna help right there, that number, I, it's amazing. I mean, yeah. it's gonna save lives. What you guys have done yeah. is saving lives. Yeah. 135. Wow. wow. That is awesome. Yeah. It's big dollars. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank amazing. you guys so much yeah, for everything you've done. Yeah, it was our yeah. pleasure. Yeah. Wow. Brian, Seafoam, thank you for everything yeah. that you guys have done to make this happen. Woo! <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> that was quick, right? right? Just like that, it's over. Well, all of our nerves are finally calm now. Uh, the Bronco has sold, and it's time for the most important moment for us, and that's going to be the presentation of the check. But you take it from here, Brian. All right, thank you, Mark and Brandon. Um, awesome job. Uh, to Warrior's Heart, Jamie, from everyone at Seafoam, it is our joy to present this check for $135,000. Here you go, buddy. Excellent, man. I, guys, I, I can't thank you enough. I mean, uh, from Warrior's Heart Foundation, from everyone, um, you know, the soldiers, the first responders, you have no idea how many people that this is going to help and what this means to us. You know, I know you guys put your heart and your soul and everything into this build. Seafoam, thank you guys so much for, you know, initiating this project, making this happen for us to get to this point. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. This is going to help so many people. Thank you guys so much. That's our pleasure because this is a dream build and it's going to a great cause. So all the blood, sweat, and tears that we put into it and everyone else who's put into it, this is the least we could do. And if you want to donate to Warriors Heart Foundation, you can go to warriorsheart.com and uh, help out some veterans or first responders that are struggling.